Hey guys, good afternoon, good evening. Hey beautiful people, welcome back to our channel. How's everyone doing? I hope you are well. Thank God it's Friday. I to wish a lot to welcome, welcome Naomi Osai. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today is the 10th of Feb 2023. We thank the Lord God Almighty. The giver of life, the one who gives us the strength and the enablement to be here again today. I have a guest in the house, like I hinted you guys yesterday, and she's come to share her story with us again. Not because of anything, it's for learning and closure, for other people to learn and for her also to be able to release some of the things that she has in her heart. So this young lady approached me, I think it was last year. She first of all approached me and I said, no, she was not ready. She was really dealing with it at that period. The thing the matter was very serious. So I told her to take her time. And I'm glad that, you know, she listened. And now she's much better, you know, she's in a better place. Not still completely out of it, but uh, she'll tell us all about it. So... Um, the last time we ha I had a guest here was a guy, it was a guy called Johnny who came to share. Welcome everybody. Give us a thumbs up as you are coming in. Please remember to like, 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 like. Give us a thumbs up as you are coming. Johnny came here last week to share. And if I say I'm disappointed, eh, I was so disappointed in some people. The comment section that day was so it was disappointing. I I'm, I mean I don't know what the issue is with some people, especially women. When women come here more than men to share, we hardly ever have men, and we say we are the Sorosoke generation. We are the one that you know we are we are we are, we are that that silencing of people where we tell people don't talk or don't talk or that we don't want it anymore. But yet. On that day that Johnny came, the kind of comments in the comments in the chats, when women come, they get absolute support. People are like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. You know, the empathy is always there. And I don't know why it's difficult for this same, our same people that are here to have empathy towards a man. But when a man comes, you start hearing people say, they start asking questions, start second guessing and asking to hear from the other person, please, I think we should do better. Let Jotori alone. Let's do better. It's not fair. I had to block a few people, even after the show, people that were running their mouth anyhow in the comment section. I just, I just you know, I'm not even going to get into any coming back and forth with anybody. This is my platform. I appreciate you guys for coming here. But you're not just coming here for coming sake. There are thousands and thousands of of channels on YouTube, the reason why you are coming here is because of the value. You bring value, you also gain value. And so when a man comes here to share, I don't expect that people will just be behaving like that. It's not fair. The same love, the same lack of judgment, the same you know understanding and empathy that we show towards women, let's show it towards men. That's why men don't like to talk. And we say, why don't men don't talk? They don't talk. Because you women don't want to hear. Some people have so much anger in them because somebody broke their heart, God knows when. Unforgiveness is living in their heart permanently, free of charge. Kilo day. Ah, hey, Joe. Hey, man, take care. Easy, oh, please. Anyway, without wasting much time, Grace is here. She's a young lady. And um, of course, please, I will appeal to you all in the comment section. Obudu fam, let's extend her the same welcome the same understanding, like, let's not judge her, is a story. People expect people's life to be perfect. There's nobody's life that is perfect, including you that is commenting, including me that is sitting down here. Our lives are not perfect. Our stories are not going to be like textbook. There will be different mistakes that people make, and that's why they ended up where they ended. But let's not judge them, please. Thank you so much, everybody. Give us a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys. Okay, without wasting time, let us welcome Grace. Hello, Grace. How are you? 
Hello, Ma. Good evening. Welcome. Can you welcome. hear me? I'm hearing you loud and clear. You okay? Oh. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Finally. you <laughs> for giving me this opportunity to be able to use your platform to have, uh, yeah, to share my story. Yes. <laughs> to share my story and yeah, and I really hope that people will learn from from it because I've also learned my lesson and yeah, I mean I don't know I'm yeah, but I'm I'm healing like I'm getting there. This is where we so, welcome. Thank you. So I hinted people yesterday that you said is from all the way in Israel. <laughs> Yes. The first time you told me ice cream, I was like, eh? Grace, this is eh? I know. Actually, I was talking to one of my auntie before I started. She thought it was an Israeli that we're talking about. I said, no, no. it's not an Israeli. <laughs> anyway, tell us about this this whole thing. Start from where you want to yes. start from and tell us this story. Okay. Mm. Um, before I um I jumped to where I'm, when I met him, and yeah, I would like to give a brief uh, by, background story i mean information about me mm -hmm. like my childhood yeah so when i was around four my 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 father traveled to the i mean came to europe and we were i mean in total we have a family of six including our, our parents <coughs> so our father traveled to Europe when I was about four, and I'm the I'm the oldest. So right. when my dad traveled, um, my mom was struggling, in you know taking care of all of us by herself. Even though we had nali, nanny, and at that time the nanny nanny did a lot of horrible things to us, and, and my mom was also pregnant with in our Nigeria. last yeah in Nigeria. Okay. was pregnant my i think my my the pregnancy was about three months when my my dad traveled so my dad my mom couldn't cope on her own so we had to move to my with my grandmother and my mom was working at that time so my grand we're living with my grandmother that lived close to where my mom was working so that was where we lived i think for for the next 10 years we lived with my grandmother there in that house. And why my mom worked so hard to take care of all of us. And my mom had my my younger brother. Um so things were going well. So with with us, with the help of my grandmother and some other family, my aunts and around that area, because where we were living was far away from where everyone was living there. Well, yeah. So when I was around six and seven, or around, I, I can't remember the exact year I was, but I was around that age. And two of our neighbors um, first carried with me. And like one was beside our house, the building we, we were living in, and one was a trusted, yeah, like a family friends that my my family really trust. Two so of them. two of them. One on different occasion, not together. Wow. That's on, so sad. Yeah, so sorry. On different on different occasion. And I never spoke about this thing until uh, I spoke about it. I never told my parents because I was, you know, at that time they would like threatened me that if I ever talk about it, if I ever tell anyone, you know, like mm -hmm. something is going to happen to me. So mm -hmm. I never mm -hmm. mentioned it. So I just carried on, carried on mm -hmm. with my life. Like, yeah, nothing mm -hmm. happened. I didn't know mm -hmm. that all this thing will eventually affect me. When you I didn't tell your mom even? No, I didn't tell my mom. Wow. Because I was so scared. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. Wow. Even my parents just got to know about it last year. Wow. But, what a burden to carry. All these but, years. Yeah. But um, I shared with some of my friends that I've also experienced the... Because I know that. Because I was... 
I didn't know that people have also been through such, you know, thing. So I, I wasn't, I don't know who will listen to me or who will believe me. So I never share with anyone hmm. until some of my friends will you know when I was in uni and I had people, yeah, talking about, yeah, their experience. Mm. So we're gonna to have to be taking breaks because she has a. <laughs> yeah, has I'm a sorry, there is okay. no one here with me to mm. help me with pain, so mm. I have to. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I think God has yeah. a special place made in hell for people who falsely carry our children. Honestly, mm -hmm. there's a special place so, in hell. Were they, those people were they young people or they were were they teenagers or adults at that time? Oh, they were. At that time, I think they'll be in their twenties. Wow! At that time, they will, they should be in their twenties. One, the one that lived uh, beside us should be like, if not late twenty, yeah, should be yeah, mid or late twenties. But the one that like our family friends, will, will be in, in his early twenties at that time. Okay, carry on. Yeah. So that happened. So, and also I was born with a rare condition, heart condition. Mm -hmm. I had holes in my heart. So I used to go in and out of hospital a lot when I was younger. Mm. So that was a lot of work for my mom, which today I respect that woman because she worked so hard that she didn't even think of because many people are pushed her at that time to move on with her life that my my dad is never going to come back, you know, and she should, you know, remarry and all that. But she never, she never did. She just focused on us raising our kids and right. supporting other family members as well. Right. And okay, so that, yeah, that was it. Just, that's just a brief, yeah, about yeah, my, yeah, my childhood. Yeah. yeah, my background and my childhood. Okay. So fast forward. I I was um engaged with I met someone who I, who I was engaged to back in 20, 20 uh, I think 2010 or so around 2010 20 in 2009 or I can't remember anymore but so we were dating and then eventually she uh, he proposed to me and we got engaged so I was thinking oh we're going to get married even my my mom, yeah, knew about him. And so, but okay, before I said that, later on, my dad came and then my dad um, took you to brought us to, yeah, mm -hmm. brought us here, yeah, all, all of us, including mm -hmm. my mom. So mm -hmm. we started living with my dad, and yeah, so life goes on, even though I never, never had a father figure in my life. Mm -hmm. So when we moved, when we moved in with my dad, it was another challenge on its own because we never had a father figure in our life. We never mm -hmm. had someone, you know. And it was really tough on all of us. Even my dad himself, he doesn't know how to act with us. We don't mm -hmm. know how to act with him. So it was a really big disaster that we usually clash all the time. Not yeah, in a bad way, but we don't we don't have that, you know. Like father and daughter or father and children relationship and all. Was that. your dad not keeping in touch when he was in Europe and you were in Nigeria? Was he not calling and talking to you and your mom? Um, I think the first ten years it wasn't. We couldn't, you know, because and later on it started communicating because at that time there's no means of communication okay. rather than letters, okay. you know. Yeah. That was in and the, the 80s when there was no telephone. Yeah, like that, was, that was in the 80s, early early 90s. I see. Okay. Yeah, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was no, you know, like he could only send letters and he had no one at that time. He said that was what he said, that he had no one. And he was also so, so, sorting himself out here because, yeah, to get his document at that time so we were not you know we don't even know what was going on even his own family they they they, they thought maybe my my mom was you know hearing from me my mom was lying about it and stuff was this any money but, when it was at that period do you know no 
the first 10 years, it wasn't sending money until maybe, I think maybe he started yeah, getting himself, you know, you know, get, uh, settling in and all that. So later on, he started, we started hearing from him, you know, communicating with us. He would send letters and put money in, in between the letters, you know. So what, we send pictures and we will send, whoever he sent the letter uh, through, we will also send our own pictures, you know, like, yeah. But it wasn't something that was regular. So my mom was still like working hard to take care of us. Let's jump to this relationship yeah. that you are talking about. It's not the which is it a different relationship? The one you were saying you got engaged? No, it was uh my yeah my my previous relationship before I met him. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So and then I got pregnant for this person, but at the end I had a miscarriage. Yeah, for this person. So at that time, it was my first experience of what, and it was a really hard one. Even my friends and my mom was there when I had that. Yeah, it was really a tough one. I had to go through in the house myself. And mm. the hospital told me that it was during the weekend and they couldn't even, there was no ambulance to take me to the hospital. So it was really a tough one. So after that miscarry, I went into depression wow yeah i went through depression a very deep one that i i i gave up on everything hmm. i i i did i i would never want to go out of the house i was you know and hmm. so after because this guy that guy we, we eventually broke up after the you know after we lost the baby and all that so we lost the baby and it broke up. We broke up, we moved on with another woman. So I think all that, you know, like just was just too much for me. So I just went into depression straight. Mm. Wow. So it was during that period, you know, like I was trying to like, okay, I was, I went for it, uh, I think therapist, mm -hmm. or a counselor, I can't, yeah, at that time. So I was trying to like, okay, to let, let me start my life again and move on it so so i registered on online dating and all that so mm -hmm. and that was when i met this this one <laughs> so right. yeah so it was in a dating site you met this one after you got in therapy for the loss of your previous relationship and the yeah, things that happened and, and the baby, baby and yeah. everything yeah so you yes. met him in a dating site yes i did Okay, tell us about about this relationship with this person that you met on dating site. What happened after <laughs> you met him? After I met him, um, I was in my, I think in my last year, I was like, I was about to do my internship at that time when mm -hmm. I met him. And, you know, we used to talk on the phone. He was so sweet. I thought, oh, this is like, I seem like a savior, you know. <laughs> is he a Nigerian? He's a Nigerian. So... I thought, oh yeah, I met another guy. So you know, I'm getting back to myself, and you know, mm -hmm. and all that. So we would talk, we would pray, you know, we pray on the phone together before I we go to sleep, and in the morning when we wake up, we pray. So I thought, oh, this is a good guy, you know, like a God has guy. a church guy, yeah, mm -hmm. a church mm -hmm. guy. So, <laughs> so, um. Yeah, so I was taking him seriously. Right. And I, yeah. So, and then I told him about my internship. And he said, oh, why can't you come to Israel to do your internship? What course that, were you studying that you were doing internship for? I, I don't want to say my course. I was, okay, I that's fine. To. If you don't want to say it, that's fine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, you said I'm you should come to Israel to do your internship. Yeah, is that, so, I mean, is that then, something that is possible? Yeah, it's possible because it's an internship. So we were allowed at that time, we were allowed to do our internship, you know, like to have, I've already done like um, uh, one internship in within that country that I was living then. So we were mm -hmm. allowed to do our second internship abroad. Okay. So, right. yeah. So I was like, oh, that's good. So I, I, we started looking for an internship placement. So I found one uh -huh. with the Ministry of Health. So... 
I um I I started work. I went to Israel and thinking that oh, going to Israel would be an opportunity for me to get to know him better, and you know, and for him to know me as well and know where he lives and you know, like yeah. Could he visit you in the country where you were at that time? No. Was he able to visit you? Did he have? No, he was. You know, it doesn't have. It it doesn't have any. Which I didn't know. I didn't know that he didn't. Well, he didn't have any document. He didn't tell me. He was just telling me that oh, because he worked for himself. He's a self-employed, so he has a lot of things to do. You know, like he's, he's always busy. He's self-employed in Israel. Yes. Okay. So, did you ask him if he was a legal resident in the country? Did that happen? Yes, I, I did. I did, but he lied. He lied that he has this document that, yeah, that he can use to work and, you know, stay in the country. And because I, I don't know, I didn't know about the, you know, the, the Israel at that time. So I fell for all that he told me about. So, and maybe it's also one of my myths. I think maybe I wasn't even, maybe I didn't do enough to also research him. But yeah. even though, yeah, even though I didn't, I I think I I didn't have an how oh, I I don't know how to research so him even to, when I got I thought mm. how to investigate him and so even when I got into I was thinking okay if I go there I'll be able to know this guy more better you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah I can ask people oh. around you know like yeah but when I got there it's a different story what happened so, when you got there. So when I got there on the phone before we talk, because after my previous experience, I decided that in my next relationship, I'm not going to jump into, you know, like um, Kiriwa mm -hmm. with any man until, mm -hmm. you know, I feel that I'm ready yeah. for it. And when we were talking about, when we we're talking on the phone, I discussed all these things with him. He said he was okay with it. That, right. oh, you know, and I thought because... Is a church boy that he would even understand better, you know. So when he said it was okay with it, I said, okay, thank God, you know, like this person I agree with me, and you know, and I I shared a lot of my dreams, you know, what I'm hoping for for the future for myself, you know. And when I got there, it was the first day I got there that. Mm, <laughs> After, because he came to pick me with his friends. So after those people left and, and at night time and he started, even before the night was around evening and he started, you know, started touching me and all that. So you were planning to stay, stay in his house? I, yeah. Because and you thought, I thought that they would not be, you people thought that yeah, because you are I, church people, I you know, will stay in the same yeah. house and there will be no kerewa between you. <laughs> there will not be any, yeah, I know, that's so how that naive is, I was. That is hardly, that hardly ever happens. If you want to practice abstinence, even for people who are genuinely, like you genuinely want to practice it, don't tempt yourself by putting yourself in close proximity with the person you are dating like that, especially at night. It's not going to work. You can't hold yourself. There's a reason That's why the Bible says that you should you should flee. You can't mm. stand and say, "I receive Holy Spirit. I will not fall. I will not fall." Mm, mm. It, it, it wouldn't work. No, no. So what happened? Yeah. But, but because he has already, we've already talked about it and all all that. Uh, and I don't know the country. I was going to stay in that country for like four months, mm -hmm. four to you know four to five months for my internship. And mm. I was, you know, like we talked about the cost, you know, it was like, oh, you can stay in my house, you know, like, yeah. That's, and I thought, okay. That's a very, very brief thing. And it can potentially be very, very dangerous, um, uh, uh, my dear. So the yeah. learning there for those who are listening, please, I don't care where he comes from. Except it's somebody that you know before. Maybe you know them. You've known each other in real life. But when you meet somebody online, please. Don't go and meet them. Don't go and meet them and stay in their house. It can potentially be very, very, you know, it can things can just go south. That was a very, very bold thing you did. did were your parents yeah. aware of it? Did they know you did this? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I told them he gave, you know, I even, he gave us his full address, his everything, uh, you know, I left everything for my 
parent before I left, you know, like in, in like because people that anything, God forbid, fall, if anything happened to you. It's short as well. So we left everything. I left everything, you know, down, mm. put everything, yeah, for my, so I just, you know, like, I know I risk, I risk my life. Yeah, I think if you are, perhaps another way to look at it is that since you've already organized the internship with a, an organization there, you could have also discussed accommodation with them. I'm sure they would have provided you accommodation, even if it yeah. means paying towards it. It would have been safer mm. to do that for your own good, you know, yeah. especially yeah. because you are also planning not to participate in any career while with him instead of going yeah. to live in his house. Yeah. Okay. I was, I think I was, I, I was naive and I believed what, all what he told me. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's a lesson for me as well. So next time yeah. I know mm. not to, not to believe. It's a learning for everybody that is listening. Yeah. Please guys, give us a thumbs up. She, uh, she's just getting into the story. Grace is getting into the story. Encourage us by giving us a thumbs up. That is how these videos get shared on YouTube. Please thumbs up guys. We got 890 people watching. And the likes are not even up to 200. Give us a thumbs up, guys. Let the, let the likes go up. Let the likes go up. The likes are not even up to 300. And we have over 800, almost 900 people watching. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't done it. Okay, let's carry on, Grace, my darling. You are doing very well. You know what? You were nervous before we started. But you sound <laughs> very confident. I can't I detest any mind. nervousness in your voice at all. Your voice is as clear and you are so articulate, so you are doing well. Okay, mm -hmm. what happened, mm -hmm. friend? Did you, did Kerewa happen or it didn't happen? So when he started doing all that, so I, then I reminded him, I was like, oh, remember what we discussed before I came, you know, mm. like that. And it was like, yeah, you know, now... I'm your boyfriend and we are going to get married. So there's no point, you know, why, why are we waiting? You know, what are we, what are you keeping? Who are you keeping it for? And that, and I had to explain to him again why I decided not to. It was like, no, there's no point. You know, like he persuaded me like for about 30 minutes. And because ah, I started thinking, where am I going to go this night? Where, mm. <laughs> like, I started blaming myself for a lot of things. Like, oh my God, what was all this? I put myself in this. So at the end, to be honest, I gave up and I just, you know, allow him to have his way, you know. And he, he, even before I he even said anything, he's already on me. So I just like, I just losing all because I was like folding up myself and like, no, 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 no. I don't want to know that, you know. Let so, but because this. he was. Sorry, Grace. I want to ask you because this is the first time you are meeting him face to face, right? You've been talking yeah. on the phone before you went to Israel. When you saw yeah. him, did you like him? Was it, or did it present exactly the way he was when you were talking long distance? Oh, um, when I saw him, I noticed that he's, he's really calm. He's a, he's a calm person. Mm. So it's quiet and, you know, it looks gentle and not, you know, if, even when we were with, yeah, with his friends, he could barely say, you know, like it was so, you know, even when he was talking to his friend, he was talking freely, you know, calmly. I was like, oh, okay, this is, you know. So mm. I like that, you know. Mm. What about physically? Yeah. Was it did physically? It's it... okay. It's not that he's the best, you know. Is um, yeah. But physically, but because so no, uh, yeah, no surprises. Is what you saw from his video and picture. Yes, from his. Okay. Yes, no, okay. not at all. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so because he's already like already fighting to you know get his way, you know, but. I just know that, oh, I'm alone with this person and I all those things that you were talking about, uh, why, you know, started running through my head like, oh, what if this person killed me? What is, you know, you better Delete. just give him what you so, know. So I uh, eventually, I allowed him, you know. And yeah. that's a red so flag. After, mm. Yeah, it is. But that's a red flag. Think, when a woman says no, please, guys, don't try to persuade them, especially because this person, you don't even know them. You were talking, you know, you just met first day. 
you can wait. It shows that you even respect that person. What's the rush? Especially if she's not comfortable just doing it to please you because she's scared. It doesn't set a good tone for the relationship even. Because you can begin to build resentment towards him because you were not ready. And you just said yes because you wanted a bed for the night. And you were in a strange country because of him. That was a very yeah. good thing. I'm thinking about it in my head now that, you yeah. know, uprooting yourself like that and going to a foreign country for someone you meet online is very, very bold. Mm. Okay, yeah. go ahead, my dear. So, yeah, so that was what happened the first day. So I didn't even, me, yeah, I didn't see it as a, I just thought, okay, let me just get over this, you know. This I've already signed contract with these people and I don't know them. I don't know how they are going to see me. And so, so I, anyway, I started working. I'll go to work and then it will, yeah, I will go because he run an agency company. It's not a company, but it's a very small, yeah, company, let's say, yeah, that he, he provides workers for all these restaurants, hotel, you know, to clean their place, the, to clean and wash plates in restaurants and all that. Right. So that's what it does then. So I will, after work, I will go to his, um, his office and, you know, we go home together. But what I noticed was that he did not allow me to talk to anybody one else you know anyone else he doesn't want me to you know it when we whenever we we, we just you know it will start wanting me and start telling me oh these people they are bad you know just you know be yourself though you don't need to make friends with anyone so i i, I we will go to church together we go to his church together mm -hmm. So, but in church, it's just me and him, you know, wherever I, you know, if even if I want to step outside to maybe go to toilet, he's already looking for me, you know. So that's a red flag again. That close yeah. monitoring and observation. You are not an old woman that needs somebody to hold your hand. You are a grown woman. You travel all the way from Europe to go to Israel. You secured internship by yourself. That's, I mean, that's not moi moi. That's a very intelligent woman. You were able to secure internship overseas. So all that close marking and close monitoring is a huge red flag and is a sign of insecurity and somebody, you know, who doesn't even, you know, maybe they have a hidden agenda. All that is not, is yes. not good. It's a sign of yes. control and insecurity. Yeah. It's never good yeah. for somebody it's, to be close I, I think, to you. Yeah, I think it's after... All this thing, when I brought him here and I get to, you know, all these things start coming in, in my head that, oh, this is why this person was doing this. You know, I start putting all the dots together. You know, oh, this is why he was doing this. This is why. Because at that time, I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't even know that that was controlling. I just know that, yes, at, at, some, at some point, I started like, oh, why are you even, you know, don't you trust me, you know? Like, why yeah. you, but I didn't know that it was for a purpose, you know, he was doing that for something because he doesn't want me to get to know him. He doesn't want me to speak to anyone in the church so That's that I don't BAC. get to know. B.O. is saying I don't that's get insecurity and preventing, it's it preventing you from hearing about him from others. Exactly. Exactly. And that exactly what happened. That's, mm. yes. Okay. So, but but I just know that that days that I will not want this thing, boy, he will force himself on me, and yeah, that you know, I just I shall manage. I I move myself. I I came back home, but before I came back home, I've already you know I wrote before I met him. Before I met him, I used to have all this you know like oh the kind of man. They, you know, what I'm looking for in a man, you know, like asking all these, you know, financial question, all the question about them that, oh, uh, what will happen if this happens? You know, all those questions that I should, you know, for me to get to know that person. Yeah. So whenever I want to bring any question up like this, this guy will just be like, oh, I'm busy or, you know, like there's, there's always something that, you know, it will always have for me not to ask that question. For us to, you know, move on, on to another 
topic and you know it will not even if he even try to answer a question that question that is not satisfactory you know like with the way we answer that question even me in my head i would be like hey like some question mark on my head but yeah but i would say at that time i was um i was just looking for some a companion so you did the four months in Israel successfully, living with him, yes. and then you came back to Europe. Yes, but I didn't get to you to stay for four months. I I was only able to stay for three months. Okay, you didn't finish the internship. No, I didn't get to finish. Is it because of the relationship, or was this something else? Because of, most mostly because of him, to be honest. Mm. You're already Mostly. tired of him after three months. <laughs> You're playing wife. You're playing wife for three months. <laughs> and you got tired. <laughs> okay. So, but before I leave, he was uh, he apologized for everything, and but I've already like yeah made up my mind that I was going back. But yeah, but we still continue our relationship. Yeah. So, um. Uh, but before when when I got I when I went um when I stayed there, I told him about me moving to the UK. That was one of my plans to move to the UK. So I didn't know I was just telling him, I was telling him about my plans, you know, my future plans and what I want to do, and you know. So one of them is to move to the UK. So when I told him, he was really happy. He was like, Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, you can go. You know that I have that. I, yeah, that I have. A, I have two brothers here. You can, you know, we get to meet them and blah blah. So I was like, okay, ah, uh, since he's happy to, you know, so that means he wants to also move there. So I didn't know about his document then. I didn't know about his document. I didn't know much about his document. He just told me that he has resident permit there. So in my own thinking that oh. Is also able to maybe after resident permit will be able to apply for passport and it will be able to also move, you know. So, and after I finished my internship, um, I I didn't finish my but I just did three months out of my internship. So I went back to to where I was living and then yeah, I found another com company and finished my internship there. A very smart woman, you know. And, you know, every time I see this happen, even the smartest of women, when it comes to romantic relationships, we don't apply that same intelligence, all that book that we know, all that knowledge that we acquire. Because you know what? When you like someone or you have love for someone, you are blinded. Mm -hmm. Loving eyes oh. never sees. Wow. Yeah. Oh, be before I continue, I forgot to add that. He has a son. He has a son with another, yeah, another lady from another an African country that lives there. So when I met him, the son was like six or seven. Mm -hmm. When I met him, he told me about it, about the boy. So for me, I believe that, yeah, it's not a big deal, you know, like for someone some things happen in life, you know, you can find yourself in, in situation that, you know, so I accepted it. I wasn't, so, yeah. So what happened when you came back to Europe? What happened with the relationship? Did you carry on? We, yeah, we carried on. Yeah, because he's already apologized and he begged me, you know, before I left. So we just carried on and I went to Nigeria to meet his family. Again? <laughs> you are the one making all the moves that the man should be making. Red flags, red flags, red I flags. Mean, because the I had not been, so I just thought that, okay. So, uh, yeah, you are doing well, Grace. I'm not blaming you. You know, this is how okay. we share the story. We bring out the, the, the lessons. It's a man that marries a woman in our culture. It's not the way around, other way around. Okay? So, first of all, you see this young lady, she was the one that carried herself all the way from Europe to go to Israel to go and meet this man that couldn't travel. I have no paper to come down here because she felt like, okay, I've met someone, I'm building a relationship. Now again, even accepting, haven't stayed with him for three months and you've seen that hmm, this thing is not likely to work. But because you were coming back, he begged you and then you carried on. 
That's another red flag. You should have ended that relation. As you were getting on the plane, you'd have just said goodbye, deleted number, ended everything. Thank God that you are safe and you are back to Europe. Say bye bye to Jati Jati. Bye bye to Rede Rede. That's what you should do. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't do that again. Learning. No, you now carried yourself again to go to Nigeria to go and meet his parents, which is what a man is supposed to do. Is the man that travels to go and meet the woman's family. So that's another red flag. But you did it. So we're learning from it for other people who are listening today. Please. Yeah. Don't, yeah. It's not a role reversal. African men cannot play that kind of role reversal, especially Nigerian men. So what happened? Mm -hmm. You went to Nigeria. What happened there? Yeah. With your own money? Or who was funding all these trips? No, he, he paid for the ticket, yeah. He paid for He told me that, you know, I wasn't even going to go, but... He told me that oh it would be nice for me to meet his family you know since I can go you know so yeah I went for two weeks uh, for, yeah two weeks I went to meet his family in Nigeria and yeah and How then I go? came back ah uh, it was okay yeah it was okay, okay. he's um he's from yeah he's he's from a um, polygamous family. Hmm. So, yeah, so everything there is like hush hush. <laughs> so, but his mom doesn't live in the same house mm -hmm. that his dad and the other wives live. So, I um, I stay with his brother, and then later we travel to his um his father's place where his father lives, and then later we went to see his mom as well. So, so I we're doing this as a fiance now because you're already planning to marry, right? If I tell you, yeah, yeah, because yes, what happened was that by the end of my trip in Israel, before I came, I don't know, maybe he's already know that, or maybe if I go, I'm not gonna, I don't know, but so he proposed to me, yes, he proposed to me. Manipulation, it, manipulation, manipulation. Yeah, he, proposed, he proposed to me when I was going after my, after the internship, when I was going after that three months. He proposed to me so yes i was yeah i was already engaged to him when i went to nigeria all right let's carry on because the story is still very long and we've already almost done yeah. one hour it's only one hour you're supposed to narrate because of time let's fast forward yeah. so at some yeah, point so, you decided yeah. that you were not interested in the relationship why did you decide that you were not interested in him anymore oh uh, because i started noticing a lot of manipulation and lies which are we, you know, if he says something now, it's not, it's not, it's not the same. So the lies will be coming too much for me. That because I, yeah, I like when you are even when you are honest about things. So if we can, if I can work with it, I, would, I don't, you know, I'm not a person that judge anyone or something. But I would like for you to even be honest with me. So, but yeah. So I, I noticed that there were lots of lies and lots of manipulations going on that I was doing. So I broke up with him in 2017 because, okay, he started telling me that, oh, that I can, why can't I start doing a document to come for him to come to, to the UK with me, you know, for us to stay together. So I have to, that I need to apply for a um, visiting visa for him. That so I applied. Goal. That was a goal from the from the beginning. So I applied for a visiting visa for him, and it was rejected. Mm -hmm. So when he was the, he rejected, so they, they gave him three like three pages of uh, you know why he was rejected in yeah. at the embassy. Mm -hmm. So when he was showing me, he only showed me one part, and that part make me be, you know it makes me feel like I'm the one I'm the cost of his rejection. You know right. why he was declined the visa. Right. So meanwhile, he had two other copies with him that stated why he wasn't given the visa. You know. Mm -hmm. So later on, I was I didn't even know that. Okay, it's what he showed me that I I thought okay that was it. So then we have to find other ways of you know bringing him. So he started saying so I I was um then then I asked for I went to see a solicitor here. And the solicitor told me to bring um, that we should bring the letter 
that you know like the the, the you know that paper that they gave him while he was declined rejected yeah. from the embassy yeah so when he sent it to me i was like huh what is this like you were so you only had like three and um, they gave you three pages why did you show me only one one page and make me feel and me i was feeling and that was part of him he's always doing that always to make me feel bad like yeah, yeah there's I'm a the, word they yeah. call it there's a word they call it i'm going to put in the comment section go ahead yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so so when i saw that you know i was in i was like no this is it i'm tired i'm tired of these lies i'm tired of your manipulations and your you know you don't know you you are you are yeah yeah that is it mm -hmm. so that I'm, I'm i'm tired of that so i broke up with him even then at uh we've already we've already had our introduction in nigeria mm -hmm. we didn't go it's just the family that did it in nigeria his family went to see my family in nigeria yeah so so we went, but I said no, no, no. I I can't. It's too much. Is uh, it begin to affect me mentally now? You know. Hmm. So I don't. I don't. I, so I broke up with him, and oh, that was when. So I broke up. When I broke up with him, I started. You know, I was. I was like, okay, I'll move on now. So I. I started. I. I met someone. Yeah. So I was dating this guy. Hmm. And meanwhile. I've never been, you know, I've never been pregnant for this, this guy. So let so, me ask you, the period that yeah. you broke up with this guy in Israel, when yeah. you came back, after you found out, you said the lies and, you know, manipulation, everything was getting too much, you couldn't take it anymore. So you decided yeah. to end it. Was there a period of time, like maybe three months, six months before you met this new guy that you started dating? Oh, uh, three months. Okay. Okay. So okay. I met this new guy. Ashwell, please look. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. While you are taking care of the baby, I'm let me sorry. say something here. It's okay. You don't have to be sorry. The baby is, is more important. Take care of him. So the part of the story that really, really shook me was that um, when uh, Grace said that after she left him, she met another person trying to move on with her life forgetting about this israeli that is not a real israeli and got pregnant for the new guy but this israeli will not give up he was still begging her to come back to him come back to me i love you it's me i'm your husband i want to marry you the, that part i couldn't understand how do you take somebody back when you you were you were dating and the relationship has ended. They are, they've moved on to another relationship and they are pregnant in the new relationship for the new person. But you still want them back. I, I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. how it happened though, Grace. Maybe you can tell us. You are here. Tell us. So he would even tell me. I told him, um, you know, like even before I met this new guy, he was already, you know, like started with tell me, no, it's me. You know, uh, he's going to find if I don't. You know, if I don't take him back, you know, like all that. So I just, even before I, I even decided to move on, move on, I had to even talk to some some people, you know, and they gave me courage that it's better I move on with this guy because this guy is not, you know, he's not a good guy. And so, so, but I'm, okay, so I met this other guy. I was, you know, I became pregnant for him and... I so when he started asking me that oh he want me back again like I, I said no that I'm pregnant for he said yes he's he's ready to take the you know the child you know he's ready mm. to take the child so because I was you know insisting I said no I'm not I'm not going to give I'm not the kind of a person that we give you know I don't want my child to you know and the father the father is not even saying that he doesn't want his child. So why would I come and give? But then that was when he started threatening me. He started threatening me that, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to find that. Do the I know? Way, so when I... Eh? The way to deal with that, mm, that's emotional. What they call emotional blackmail. That's what he was doing. So the fact that you ended that relationship, yeah, what works? When you end a relationship, end it. 
properly. Okay? It's because there were still windows for him to reach out to you. So, what you could have done that would have worked effectively in ending that relationship was for you to... You how you know how Annie used to say to block to the fourth generation? You will block and block on all levels. On angle, social media, if you are still in the dating app, if you are not there anymore, you on phones, WhatsApp, block and block. That way, you are not in contact with him anymore. The reason why he was still able to beg you that he will accept another man's pregnancy is because he had access to you. Yeah, because he was using uh, family. Because when with all what he was doing, so I, I was I would tell my something. I would tell my mom and I would tell my you know my dad that oh this person I don't you know they would be like oh no yeah just you know all relationship they have their ups and downs and so so I stopped talking to anyone about it again. So I started you know because I know that if I continue to tell like my family they will keep encouraging me meanwhile they are not the one in this relationship i'm the one that know this person very well i know i know him more than yeah they do so it would use them to get to me you know but the last one so when i became pregnant he started he even saying i had to even run run away from my house then to to my you know to one of my friends house to stay with my friend so he sent he said he sent his brother to come and you know to come to my house and see and then he told me that because when i went to one into his you know the village when i went to i saw a an abandoned building built with a, a clay or something so and you know so when i came i asked about it and he told me all oh, that the there's a, uh, you know, it's like a shrine that their four forefather used to use, blah, blah, blah. And so, so then when he was threatening me, he brought it up. He mm -hmm. said, you see that, you see that shrine? Because in their family, once they, you get engaged to them or, you know, you're about to, you can't leave them. That if no, you Riro, leave them, that if you it's leave them, you can, you can find that this, that you see, mm. you see my, because one of his sister, his stepbrother, his, his stepsister mm. had an, a very a big accident that maybe her husband also died or something because mm. of something he didn't really tell me because he's not he doesn't want me to know anything much about his family so he's always being you know very very conscious is of it, what it you know grace do you mind me asking me. is this guy from is he from edo state this is really, no is no from? <laughs> where is he from? That he has a shrine. And then that shrine, the only thing the shrine do is to stop people from leaving marriages that is not even fully they've done, yeah, done introduction. Like, mm. He said in the so I was, you know, because I've never dealt with things like this before. So I was really, really scared. I had to run away from my house and mm. stayed with my friend. Even a friend of mine came all the way from, you know, another part of Europe to come and stay with me. Even that mm. one even called him, you know, to please leave me alone. You know, why mm. is he, you know, on the phone, he was even telling that one, even crying, even crying on the phone to mm. that one. Mm. Mongo Park always yeah. cry. They are, they, they are known to be criers. They are tank criers, Mongo Parks. So I wanted to say this. Thank you, Susanna, for bringing it up. You see, I don't know if you noticed, but from the story you are telling us, it seems like there's a pattern. We are, we are jumping into relationship very quickly mm. yeah. and I'm, 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 I hope you'll be able to deal with that in therapy I don't know if you've dealt with it already but there is a period when you need to just stop dating so the period that you broke up with him eh, you yeah. could have just taken that time to date yourself to love yourself to you know do things and travel or whatever you know you had plans you were moving to the uk you were doing your work you were doing your schooling and everything that period because the tendency is that if you're always jumping from relationship to the you keep making the same mistakes yeah if you don't yeah. take a break to heal especially when there was pain or the previous relationship wasn't good you mm. need time to reevaluate what happened in that relationship what did i do wrong how did I present myself? So it would yeah. have given you enough time to be able to figure out the need why you felt like you had to go to Israel to go and meet mm -hmm. this man. 
you you mm. found a place to do your placement you, you, put, you presented yourself to him you went to nigeria you are the one doing all the running around for this relationship why why yeah. and then you'll be able to deal with it to know why it seems like you know you are attracted to this relationship that wasn't even giving you anything back so yeah. the, the, the learning there not for you is not for you to feel bad grace Please don't feel bad. No, no, it's not. It's not. Not at all. I, yeah. I, I like that you brought that up because yeah. I think mm -hmm. after all this thing happened to me, I was able to. I mean, during this time, like this last one that happened, I was able to sat down, and that was when I realized that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. All this thing that you are also pointing out, I was able yeah. to point them out. Yeah, and I was able there. to, mm. yeah, to connect it like to my childhood and, and my what happened to me when I was young and the father, even up to now, I don't still have any father figure. Even my dad, yeah. even yeah. though he's my, still my dad, but I still don't have that, you know. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I'm, I'm now I'm trying to deal with it, you know. Mm. Just, That's yeah, That's I've also, well yeah, I've well also done. realized that, that uh, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Um, well yeah, done. I think you're, you're I was, a very smart girl. Was, mm. So, I mean, it's learning for everybody that is listening. Guys, give us a thumbs up if you are enjoying this conversation. Grace is sharing her life story, but we are bringing out the salient lessons for other people. Please, take time between relationships. Don't move. If you're moving from one relationship to the other too quickly, you are likely to jump into the same kind of relationship. And obviously, there are daddy issues in, in Grace's story. You can see that. If you have daddy issues... There's no boyfriend or man that can that can help you with that. You need to go and get some yeah. therapy for that. So there are daddy issues involved. There's a need to connect, you know, with a man. You know, absentee. Somebody says absentee father syndrome. Yeah. I don't know what they call it in psychology, but there's definitely that. And of course, because of what she suffered again as a child, all these, you know, rolled together into one. But anyway, let's move on very quickly. This man said he wants to marry you with a, with a pregnancy that belongs to another person and he made you promise not to tell anybody and decided that I will be the father. He even told his family that he's the father of the, of the pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, he did. And you so, are rich. Of course, because I, like I said, like um, when he was apologizing and begging and persuading and all that, he was running around, you know, calling whoever he thinks that, you know, that that can get to me, you know. So he was using pastors. He we even he, he called his pastor that because we got married in Israel. We eventually got married after our first breakup in, in 2017. So we got you went, back, like, oh, you went back to Israel to marry him again. I did, I did. Yes. Were you pregnant then when you married him? I did. You were pregnant when you married him. Mm. Okay. All right. So you No, I lost him. that pregnancy. Yeah, I lost that one. Yeah. Oh, you did. I married him and then yeah, I did. I went back because the moment I, I yeah, I went we, we I went back to him. That was when he said, "No, we should get married, you know." You know, so we should get married and yeah, we got married and yeah, so that I can bring him here. We mm -hmm. got married so that we have a document to prove that we are married. It will be easier for him to come here. So yeah, it okay. did. We, yeah. So what happened after the marriage? After the marriage, they, it still didn't change. This person didn't change. It was even getting worse after the marriage. So, but he was very smart because he knew now that he could, you know, do anything now that we are married, he could, you know, but he was trying to also um, manipulate me in a way that, okay, because he know that I can, he, that I can bring him. So he was using every means to, to find information for me to bring him here. So Did when I, I was... Did you realize so, at this point that the plan, the game plan from the beginning was for him to enter? I didn't, did I didn't know. know. I didn't, didn't know. know. Okay. You still didn't no. know that he wanted to just come to the UK? No, I didn't know. I thought okay. maybe because he was in love, he loved me so much. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Yeah, so I still happened? didn't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so even at some point, I, um, I was, the work I was doing here, 
I couldn't, you know, because my hours at work became, you know, uh, um, was caught due to something that happened to one of the clients I was um, working with. That one passed away. So because my, my client passed away, they couldn't find, you know, new client for me on time. So, so because of that, because he needed me to work so that I can, you know, be able to prove to the, you know, the government office, that, yes. that you yes, can afford that to bring your husband. I can mm -hmm. afford exactly. So I know. I know. <laughs> so he was telling me he was even frustrated at some. Yeah, you need to work. You need to, you know, if you can't work, go and give your doc your your paper to someone to use. You know. Hmm. He even told me at some point, he even told me to, to give my, my sister, my my sister that has her own document, that hmm. has her own, you know. <laughs> so that I should guess how can my sister use my 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 document when she's already, you know, she has her own and there's and, a requirement so, in the but, home office how much you need to make for you to be able to bring yeah, your spouse. So, so he needs that money to be so in your I account. Was really at that time I was really, really frustrated, even because it was pushing a lot, it was, you know. So I still don't know. So at the end, um, at the end, I don't know. One of his friends advised him about, and then the EU settlement scheme came up. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So one of his friends now said, "Oh, let's you know, you should try EU settlement scheme. They are, you know, they they are they are, you know they are allowing a lot of you know uh, EU family members to join them. You know." I said, "Okay, let's try." So that was how I tried to, you know, and I, I, I got another job. I was working. I was, you know, I was earning enough. And so I um, I was able to, for the first time, it came to, it came to UK as, as a, um, when he got his EU settlements and, yeah, family permit visa. He mm. came and he came and even when he came, can you imagine my birthday was supposed? It was it was even planning to leave before my birthday so that it doesn't get to celebrate my birthday with me. Hmm. So he came. So was when he came, was a occasion for you guys when he came finally because he's been trying. I think a period of yes, years. Yeah, it was. You know, it, it was, and for me as well, I was thinking, oh, finally. My husband, husband is here. Yeah. I think, mm. yeah, things will be much better now. Maybe because it was a long distance thing. That was why we are having tension. We are having all this, you know. I didn't even, yeah. I, I didn't know what was coming for me. Mm -hmm. What so, happened when he came? So when he came, he went back. He went back and finally came back in 2001. So when he came in 2001, oh, that's because when he came, we were able to apply for, you know, his um, his and uh, his biometric. So under two two weeks, he's already had. They gave him five years. Mm -hmm. They gave him five years of um, you know, like to stay here. So he got his five years before he left to Israel. So and he said, "Oh, then he's going to go back and plan to move here finally." That was the plan from day one. That was the yeah. plan from day one. But unfortunately, you didn't see it. Uh, Grace, I if you don't mind me asking, what tribe is this Israeli from? What, what Yoruba. It's Yoruba. It's a Yoruba demon. <laughs> it's a Yoruba demon. Lovaton. Who's yeah. up? They say it's Yoruba it's demon. A, no? Yoruba is a Yoruba demon with camouflage. You don't even know that. Is it? It's a Yoruba, Yoruba, demon. Yoruba demon in church. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when he now came back fully, what happened? Why are you not together and why were you so broke? Oh, so when he now came back to get and he back, oh, that's when his true color, you know, like what he has been hiding. So it will start, you know, start even some days it will be keeping malice with me, he won't talk to me. He won't even, you know, and then I'll be asking me some, I've even f saw him some, the way he will look at me like a piece of, you know, like, I don't want to say, I don't know if it's a lot, a piece of, like, who, who are you, you know? And the two start, are showing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he starts showing me that I don't even care about you, who are you, you know? And, you know, start, like, it starts, you know, 
was lying living in about your house. The, yeah, he was living in my house. Okay. He was living in my house. And uh, when I was pregnant with my um, with my baby, mm -hmm. I was told that I had they found that I had fibroid. Mm -hmm. So I was I was you know I, you know how fibroid they you know lots of bloods and during you know during the period of time and and we you know I I I I'm always in so much pain when I'm having my you know monthly cycle. Yeah. So I I spoke to the doctor about it and they advised me that oh because I'm young and I don't know why they that because I'm young and they still know that I want more kids so if they say if they want to do the surgery so they because they don't want to do the surgery now that if we could you know do um, just have another child or mm. try and have another child or something but this this guy. <laughs> because he's here now, he, he knows that no, no way he's going to have another child with me because he doesn't want anything that we even connect me together. and him together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that even when he leaves, that he leaves, that's it. He doesn't want anything that, you know. Mm -hmm. So this guy, we even, when he came here, when he, he here, whenever he's, I don't know how to, I don't want to, I, you know, that he's controlling the Kerewa. Mm. You understand? Choose you care, why you? Mm. Exactly. And then when, whenever I choose, if I say no, this one is not what happened in, in Israel. Though. This mm. one is, is is doing it, whether I say yes or no. Mm. You understand? Well, yeah. by, force, I, by force. Yeah, yeah by force. Uh -huh. We mm -hmm. do it. So me, I would just lie down. I would just lie down there. I would just like, okay. I will even ask me, are you done now? So when I when it's done, I will stand up and just go and clean, clean myself. Are you still thinking in your naivety that uh, having a baby will keep you together? I was trying to get pregnant, not knowing that you already me, have a not plan. even for me, to be honest, for me at that point, I'm not even because I know that I I can't I can't I can't even lay my hands on what it was, you know, what is going on. Because I would ask him if is there anything. I even thought I'm the one that I've done something. I would even ask because if the way he was treating me, you know, some days I would cry to bed. I would even call my friends crying, you know. Like feel like there's something of some kind of torture. He was torturing me mentally, emotionally. Mm. He was giving me, but I can't, I can't place my hands on what he was, you know, what was going on because I don't like. I don't know. It's like something is going on, but you don't have evidence to it. But you still managed to get pregnant for him. No, I didn't. It never, didn't. no, no. So I'm confused never... now. I'm lost. The baby, I thought you said you had a miscarriage with the baby that was for somebody else. So who is this? Who is the father of no, this baby? No, this is another, another, yes, another baby. Because in 2019, we broke up again in 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we broke up again in 2019. Yeah. And yeah, so that was, it was during that my breakup with him in 2019 and I was already filing for divorce because he refused yeah. to, you know, he refused to to sign the, to accept the divorce. Instead, that was when he was using all the pastors and my, 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 my friends, my family, my, you know, my brother in Canada and was so, he here then in twenty nineteen? No, he wasn't here. He so, was away. He was in Israel. So you got pregnant for someone else? Yes. Before the divorce was final. Before he came here finally. Yes. Yes. Ah, Chineke. Now wow. So all this mm -hmm. mess was on ground with him still in Israel. Had it was it be between the time he came for the first time to do his biometric, went back and before you came back finally that you got pregnant for someone else no 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 it wasn't even here we were not together that when i got pregnant for someone else we were not together but you were married that time we were married yeah when we were, we were not together i was I'm trying to understand because you know you said you were pregnant for someone when when it yeah that back. was in 2017 okay before we got married, that was that happened in 2017, middle of 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we got married like 
they are late to, when we when you know when we we got back together we immediately we got married again we got married in 20 that's 2017 right so was it the same was that and was the, it the same guy or was someone else no no a different guy okay okay so we already identified guys please be nice be comforting all right no judgment please we're not here to judge anybody we already oh, established fine. that Grace had some, I'm... she had some, you know, daddy issues. Always looking for love. She's looking for love. You know, because that's why you see the story is kind of, is, is complicated. It's complicated, yes, I know my story. You're always in relationship. You're always, you know, you're always, I know. you know, you, it's like you always need to be with a man. Even with this Mongo mm. Park in one corner. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so how did this all play out with you being pregnant and him coming here? How was that? Do you think no, I've already that had, um in twenty nineteen was when we broke up early twenty nineteen, we broke up and we separated and that was I was already seeking for divorce, but he refused, you know. So I met this um I met this person and yeah, one thing led to another. I was pregnant for him. So, and because, so when I met, the, it, there was too much pressure on me from everyone, you know, like, because they didn't really know this person. So everyone was already like, oh, yeah, the angel, you know, is better than, you know, that phrase. And even the pastor was telling me that divorce is not allowed. They cannot, they cannot, um, they cannot, they will not allow divorce. That we just have to work it out. Even they had to give me prayer point to to mm. to pray for him because they believe that is um is the family or is because he's from a polygamous home. So his father's wife that they don't want him to settle down. That's that's why he's trying to um yeah he's misbehaving and so that I should I should just you know we should work it out and continue to pray for him and all that. Mm -hmm. So even though I then I told the pastor and I everyone knows at, at that time like everyone that was close to me know I was pregnant I was seeing someone else because I was already fed up like no I'm not so then he started telling them that he's a changed person it will change it will treat me right it will do it was you know like promising heaven and earth to everyone so and yes. And because of the other guy noticed that there's so much going on with me. I wasn't, I wasn't present. I was in a relationship with this person, but I wasn't present. You understand? Right. I wasn't, I wasn't present. So this other guy that I was pregnant for had to, you know, break up with me. Let me get to how you ended. What happened eventually when he came here and the thing didn't work? What happened? So it started. So when, so I know that things were things were. So I, I was I started seeing the therapist because mm -hmm. uh, it started affecting me mentally and emotionally. But I started seeing a therapist, you know, just to you know to be able to talk about my feelings and you know I wasn't myself anymore. I'm always sad, always crying, and that. So is you know it's torturing me. Well, you know torturing me that I don't even know what was going on. So one day I was at work and before then, the previous day, someone have been ringing my phone from Israel because I don't have any friends because of him. I don't have any, a single friend from Israel. I don't have no one. None of them have my number. So I started seeing this strange number calling me from Israel. So out of my, you know, because I was being lawyer and so I even called when I was at work on that day. I called him that, oh, this number I've been calling. Not, someone have been calling me from Israel. And I don't know why they are calling. They've been calling me since yesterday and it's that same number. This is the guy that doesn't even care. When I go, when, when I go to work or anything, they will not even, it doesn't, it doesn't send me or anything. You need to see the the way he was trying to get to know the number. He started asking me, "Oh dear, please send me that number, dear. Who is calling you? Can you send me the number? You know, I see the way he was so, you know, like he was so interested in that number. 
So I just said, I said, no, I need to find out first who this person is before I give this guy my, the number. So I called when I was on break at work. I quickly, I even had to call this person directly from my phone to Israel, which cost me a lot of money. So I, I didn't even mind because I wanted to find out first. So this person now called and was now telling me very strange thing that I don't even know. Like, mm. you see, this person that you are with, this is what he did in Israel, in evaded tax. Someone opened a business for him because he doesn't have a document. Mm -hmm. Open a business for him, and mm -hmm. you know, that in that person's name, yeah. and instead of him paying tax, yeah. he took all the money he was supposed to pay tax he did not pay tax instead mm -hmm. he was you know diverting the money hmm. into a special account hmm. so he left that brother did not even know what was going on because that brother trusted him so much that he just you know that brother opened the account and gave him the card they didn't know it was going to japan they didn't know it was japan they, the they didn't because you know what he was he has even told them Eight months after our wedding, that we are no more together. Hmm. He started telling people in Israel that, oh, that me and him, we are no more together. And at that time, we are, we were together. Okay. Oh. That we are no more together. That is not, you know, like, yeah. So that because he started dating this other girl hmm. and even like to this girl that is not married, that he was, he was even already he has already started talking to that girl's family that he wants to marry the girl meanwhile you and him you are still married meanwhile we are yeah we are still married so, so, so this a, girl because it's a whole lot of you know complicated relationships you were you know carrying on you know with other people he was carrying on with other people it was just complicated yeah, but me i wasn't cheating on him i've never i never cheated on him it was when you ended briefly, then you have, you know, yes, you have other yes, relationships. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I wasn't, I never cheated on him. I never cheated on him. So how And did whenever end? anything happened, I always let him know that, no, I've already moved on with somebody else. And I, I've always been truthful. I always, you know, and you see, I, yeah. You see what happened? Let me tell you what happened. Why you kept, why everything seems so modeled up now for you. Yeah. The clarity is that you will gain is that yeah. you can't oh, open another door except you've closed one. So it seems like you were opening more, you were opening doors without closing previous doors. So again, you said, okay, you know, uh, the relationship is ended, but it was not truly ended because you were still in contact with him. And that's why you were going back and forth, back and forth, you know, dating other people, but that window was still open for him to come back. So yeah. you never ever close that door. Because yeah. if you say you are not doing it again and you meant it, I know the pressure is real because family is involved, pastors are involved and they are telling you, you need to fix your I know, I know, trust me. As Nigerians, we know the pressure. So yeah. it was always, you know, parents telling you to go back, try and fix your marriage and all that, but you never really close that door. So this is the learning mm -hmm. for everybody. You need to close that door if you are sure. You are sure that this person is never going to work because they told you this and that, that they didn't add up. The relationship is not nice. The way they made you feel, the way they treated you. You, you know you are not doing Close that door and close it completely. No room for come back again. So that's why it seems like you will go, you come back. You will break mm -hmm. up, you come back. So twice now, yeah. I can count at least a minimum of two times that you broke up with him and you yeah. and you went back. You broke yeah. up with him first time, you, you got pregnant for someone else, you went back to go and marry him. You lost that baby yeah. in pregnancy. Then you, you got married, you broke up again, you got with somebody else again, you got pregnant and you went back to him. You see? So it makes everything so complicated, which is also not good for your mental health. It's yeah. not good because you kept, maybe you kept thinking people don't change. That's another thing. Yeah, yeah. I thought people it would change, change because you kept promising that, oh, it would change. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, mm -hmm. and then they're telling me, oh, you don't know who you are going to meet. You don't know how the person is also going to be. And so I was just yeah. like, yeah. 
What was the so, what was the, what, the, the the thing that finally broke the camera broke the camera spell? Uh, so when um yeah. I um so the lady the person now <laughs> called me the person that called me happened to be is the girl that he was dating that he was mm. also promising and that girl was also was living with him in Israel hmm. even that wow. girl was living with him in Israel was staying in his house. So mm. the girl now told me that, oh, that if you don't know who is calling, this is, yeah, I'm the one, yeah. Then she told me about her still. I could not believe it. I could mm. not. I know something was going on, but I did not. But so the girl broke up with him when the girl find out because the girl just moved to Israel when she got involved with him mm. because she, he knew that the girl doesn't know anyone in, in Israel at that time. And, you know, so when mm. people started seeing him and the girl, they warned the girl that, oh, this person that you are you are following, this person you are dating as a girl, as a wife. Mm. And in fact, they even got married. Yes. Um, that mm. the wife, they even got married here. Mm. Yes. So what happened? Um, so that, when that. i when i got home i did i could not i don't know how to confront it because already yeah. can you make the baby maybe watch an ipad or watch tv so that he can allow you to conclude you're almost at the end now mm -hmm. i'm sharing my link guys if you want to come and say something to grace there's a reason why she's sharing the story i know it's very confusing she kept saying my story is complicated she was telling me Mm, the baby wants to talk. <laughs> she can't say my story is complicated. I haven't heard the full story before. And now I finally understand how complicated the story is. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I um I I was able to speak to my therapist about it, you know, because yeah, and she encouraged me to, you know, how to confront him. So when I confronted him, he was so mad. He was, you know, like so hungry and like, why did I, I pick up their calls? You know, did I not like? He was say, did I not tell you not to pick up anyone's call from Israel? Did I not tell you not to do this? Did I not tell you not to do that? You know, I was like, this person has been calling me, but I need they call my direct line, not even WhatsApp. So I don't know. I need to find out why they are calling me. And mm -hmm. they call me, I don't have a friend in Israel. So for someone to be calling me from Israel like that, it must be, yeah, important. So I, um, yeah, so it started attacking me, started, you know. So I, I, that day I had to leave the house and, you know. So I spoke to one of my cousin in, yeah, here about mm -hmm. it. And he was like, and he and his wife was like, no, you know what? This person, if you don't leave now, is going to kill you last. Delete. No, sorry. It's going to delete you. Mm. It's going to delete you, so you need to, you know. So when he came, he had he went for a night shift. When he came that day, the following day, I just told him, I said, please, I just need time now to think about all this whole thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, when I ask you for something, this thing, about your tax invaded, you even lied to people that you were going to northern part of Israel. You were not even coming to, you know, that you were coming to he to UK. You lied that you were not going, you know. Meanwhile, you ran away from Israel. You didn't tell them when you left. No, he was the also escaping. He was escaping from Israel. No wonder he wanted you to walk double, triple shift so that he can get away. He had his plan. He had all his plan laid no. out for him. Hmm. You didn't tell anyone. Even the one that eventually found out that you came here, you even lied to them on the mm. phone that mm. yo, you came, you came, you and your son, you 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 are in UK for coming back. You brought his son too. That you could tell the person that the son came you, too. You are with. Hello, your Grace, wife your now. Is you know that you and you came with, with your wife. Did you so come the, with him as well? Point. So I just. Hello, you know, Grace, like, can you hear me? 
Like I said, Uh-oh. It is all it's breaking gimmick. now. Ma, hello? Can you hear me, Grace? Did his son come yes, with him? Yes, I think. He brought his son from no, Israel. No, 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 he didn't. No, he didn't okay. bring his son. But he just like to, you know, people just so that they don't know that um, he's with me. And, you know, because I already lied to them that me and him are not together anymore. Okay, so that so, was the last, last straw. And then I so saw when I called the emergency number, they transferred me to the police department. So the, the police stayed on phone. The police stayed on phone with me. And they, why? So when he noticed that the police are on phone with me, mm -hmm. so he quickly just packed a few things. You want them to and, deport him? <laughs> Israel cannot be easy. <laughs> and, and left. So mm -hmm. even. So there's a car, we bought a car. So I even gave him most of the most of the money. Most of the money we used to buy the car is from me. Mm. Was it working? Yeah, so so he came uh, yeah, I um I look for a job for him from Amazon. I even applied to the, you know, he doesn't believe that I'm smart. He see me as this very stupid person. You this, so, you this girl that can go to Israel to go and do internship. Yes, I know. So, I don't even know yes. how to get, I don't even know how to get visa to go to Israel. And you're not smart. <laughs> you are too smart. So if he believes that I'm not smart, I cannot. So he always wants me, he doesn't want me to, to do things. But when I do things, I always do them excellently. So mm. he would, yeah. So I, I was able to get, I, when he, at the beginning, when the job that we got, I got for him via my friends, he always was complaining that that job is too, is too difficult. His hands, his hands are paining him. His so every day I'll be rubbing, <laughs> rubbing, rubbing hands. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Now he's come to UK. I thought it, he thinks that UK is where he will come and pick pound. You come and ping pound on yeah. the vlog. <laughs> so I was able to eventually I was able to find you know uh, this Amazon uh, job for him. Where else? You are the so, one still yeah. looking for job, and you are not smart. If you are smart, Uncle, what would you do? Hmm. So, so the police just yeah. out that day, right? No, they did not even come. They were just on the phone, <laughs> you know. They were just on the phone, you know, I put them in, on speaker, so they were asking, is he still there, you know, and then they would ask what's going on, because it's just me and my son, because I was so scared that day, I had to even put my son on my back, that okay, whatever we happen today, we should happen to both of us, or something. Thank God yeah. So, how so, are things with, 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 I mean, when he left, did he try to come back again? Does he have his permanent residence and all that? Oh, he doesn't have, but he has five years stay. So he's still, yeah. So they, they gave him five years stay since 2020. And it's 2023, so, it's, so that's three years now he spent. Yeah, so he's, mm -hmm. still, so, he's still, so he's still in the country, but yeah, I've never, the last time I saw him was in court, you know, so. But, Are you still yeah. in touch with him? No, no. I think this time around, I really, you know, I really, because there's now, I just sat down that if I don't do what, he, you know, because I have to protect my son and I can't, I can't do that to my son. I need to, you know, I need to do, I'd be able to do better. Whatever it is, I need to get hit from all the past and everything that has, you know, happened to me, the trauma and everything. So, um, I'm so I'll glad that you are, you are assessing therapy. Yeah. Block, change your number. Yeah. 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 Don't, because the reason why I'm asking. And his family, they mm -hmm. keep threatening me. Even because the police came mm -hmm. that afternoon when he left, you know, because, yeah, they came in to take statements. So I told them about the first career work that he does on me and all that and all mm -hmm. the emotional. Yeah. And emotional abuse and all that so mm. yeah so and then we were able to they change my luck and we're able to um to ask for a uh, normalization or that mm. and all that after five years he's gonna he's gonna try to look for you like we said to johnny when people use you to come what they don't realize is that 
they're still going to need you to regularize their stay to get their permanent residency. So five years is going to expire soon. And they might want to come back. So I hope you'll be, you get to a point where you will. No, I don't even think I'll be. Even no, this time I'm really ready. Um, Yeah. I mean, it time. starts from access, not having access to you at all. Yeah, yeah, no. Mm. no. And there's a no molestation order, but if he knows where you live, that will not stop him from coming. Yeah, he still knows where I live, so that's the thing. That's, mm. yeah, that's Maybe like you might the other thing. Um, I'm mm. work, yeah, I'm working on. Uh, yeah, consider moving. Yeah, consider moving. Mm. So finally, I'm sharing my link, guys. I just need encouragement for Grace. Okay, she's young very naive obviously you can tell from the story not street somebody in comment section kept saying oh grace is not street smart at all she's not street smart yes you can tell it's not every woman that is street smart okay and obviously mongo park always know when a woman is not street smart and that's why they will go for women like grace she's made a lot of mistakes and i'm glad she owns up to it she's in it she's in therapy she's healing but there's a reason why you want to share the story grace tell us why did you want to share your story today? Um, I think the reason why I want to share my story is also part of my talking therapy. Mm -hmm. And also to share my story so that other women will not, you know, you know, like other women will not be in the same condition, I mean the same, have the same issue, you know, mm -hmm. to learn for, for people to learn from it and mm -hmm. for parents also to learn from it, you know. And because, you also said but, that. Okay, carry on. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So because even now, um, when my when I eventually told my 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 dad about my what happened to me when I was young, and I still don't get that, you know, I'm even regret. Why do I even tell him in the you first still don't place? get that that encouragement and comfort? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Mm. So well, um, I'm picking myself up. Little by little. I'm well not done. there yet, but yes. Well done. Well done. You're doing very well. You also said that you feel very alone, that you don't have a community around you. No, I don't. I you don't. Said, you totally said alone. That That's you saw the last, you know, VC that we did. You really need something like that. You need people that will, you know, <laughs> be like, you know, accountability partners and friends yes. and, you know, comforters, people that will hold you and call on you and check on you. You need people yes. around you. Yes, I do. I do okay. because I uh, I mean since all this thing has happened to me, I can tell you because most of my friends are in abroad, they, most of my close friends. Mm. They are not yeah, they are not, I don't really have close friends here, you know, even right. the ones that I I have. He has already is manipulate he manipulated them. He's he's been going around now telling people that me, I gave him a, a you know, a child that does not belong to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know your baby has a relationship was, with the father, the biological father, the one, right? On the, yeah, in fact, and those people they did not even yeah find out what my own the, yeah my own side of the story or anything. Yeah, but they they just you know they get to believe him, but it's fine. It's okay. I'm just, yeah. I'm just it's not, it's okay. Whatever they believe, what do, what do you care? You can talk about when anybody <laughs> believe anyone. So what is your business? What you see, eh, when people start judging other people and running around with people's story, you won't call. What about you? You won't call. Don't you have story? Don't you have mess yeah, in your life? To be honest, people, like, people behave, think... I think their life is so perfect. There's nobody that has a perfect life. The level of complexity I... in our life is just different. No baton. So please, yeah, I used don't, to don't think bother that about what, that. What, I, I used to be so scared about wow, what would people say? What mm. would, you know, like, um, I think that was why I also made a lot of mistakes in my life. Because, mm. um, yeah, like, yeah, well, it's it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. It's, um, yeah. Welcome, learning. my darling. You did so well. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well done. You see, eh? Self-realization eh, is the first is the first thing that you need to do when you want to grow. And I know that you realize this. You are in therapy. You are working through your issues. And you have a beautiful baby who has a relationship with his biological son now. And the Mongo Park that entered your life all these years, 
you know, there were tweets and tons on the way. Is out, out, out of the picture now. The thing I'm gonna say, I'm sharing my link, guys. She just needs encouragement and love. I don't think she had a lot of love, you know, growing up because the mom was obviously busy, you know, taking care of, you know, children with an a husband that was not present. Growing up in Nigeria is not the best, you know, back then. Children didn't have a lot of love because it's sustenance force. Do you have food in your belly? Do you have clothes on your back? That's what parents cared about. But we now know that as a result of not meeting children's emotional well needs, a lot of all these children grew up and, you know, there are now so many people who are adults now that are emotionally retarded. You know, they cannot, some people cannot communicate. Some people don't know how to receive love. People like Grace now looking for love in all the wrong places. You can see her story is very complicated. I get it. But there is no smoke without fire. It's something that led to it. And if you listen very well, you will see that there was no self-love. And she's learning to do that now. So, Grace, what I'm going to say to you, yeah, love yourself. Love your son wholeheartedly. It's a gift. You said you had five brothers. Mm -hmm. So, God blessed you with a son in the midst of all that. And how come... Guys, I'm sharing my link. I'm going to be out of here soon. If you want to say something to Grace, please use the link and come in. How come all these years you were dating this Mongo Park, you were getting pregnant for other people along the way when you break up, but you never got pregnant for him? You see, you see, you see, you see, you see this kind of a thing. You never got pregnant for him once. Even though you've been dating for years, along the way you break up, you go and date other people, you get pregnant, but you never got pregnant for him. Wow. So me, I believe that, you know, everything that happens in our lives, yeah, is, is preparing us for, you know, what your mess will become your message. Okay. You are not the only one. It's because you are bold enough to come and tell your story now. There are people who their life is even more complicated. They've made more, they made mistakes, you know. So just love yourself. You're going to be all right. We're here for you. Don't worry. We are here for you. Thank you very much for sharing. Really appreciate you, my darling. It can only get better. Over the farm is a very big, it's like a big teddy bear fa teddy bear that likes to hug. So don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna reach out. There are so many people that you know will not judge you, they will love you regardless, you know. Whatever you are looking for, we're here. Thank you so much, my darling. M-E-A-A. -A. Unmute yourself, please. My link is in the comment section, guys. I've got like maybe 10, 15 minutes to take calls. So use it now, please, so that we can encourage Grace. Let's encourage her. M-E-A-A, -A, welcome. Hello, Atubi. Um, hello, Bodo Farm. Um, I'd like to um, say uh, well done to Sister Grace. She's done wonderfully well sharing her story. Mm -hmm. I, um, I do believe that this is, um, a good form of therapy, which she highly needs. Mm -hmm. And I, there, there are a lot of lessons, you know, to pick from her story, but the one that stands out is, um, you know, um, like her story basically shows that, you know, she, she has emotion on it. Yes. And, and it's lingering. Like it's, it's um I feel like it's something she needs to sort out with her dad. And she, she tried. And, yeah. She, she although, tried, but it's not working. I don't think she's gonna get it with that from her dad. But she's in therapy. Which is good. That's a good yeah. um step she has taken. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and then she needs to take time out. No you seem to be the kind of person who loves companionship. And Aside from that, I, I think also because of your um, emotional needs that were not met growing up, um, you, 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 you tend to want to find, you know, um, want to get these needs met. And mm -hmm. that's by, you know, um, you know, um, just making yourself available yeah, yes. to people that yeah. appear to show you any form of interest. Yes. Uh, as I stated in the comment section, I'm, I'm the same as me, King. Um, like this is something that we parents need to really, 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 really go the extra step to ensure that we we cater to like 
because as Nigerians, we, a lot of parents just feel like, okay, once you get them into school, they have a home to live in, they have food to eat. Uh, yeah, so they're well taken care of. They don't, we, a lot of Nigerian parents don't take that time out to bond emotionally with their children, mm-hmm. you know, and this is the after effects. This is the outcome of a child's life when their emotional needs are not met. I I didn't know all this until, you know, I had to go through some psychology um, courses where I, where I live, you know, so I don't, I feel, I feel for you, Sister Grace, I, I do understand you're not intentionally getting yourself into these issues. Um, it's just because you're human and, and, you know, you just want to be loved. Mm-hmm. You just, you're not doing it. You're not, you know, you're not seeking for something bad. You're just not like, you know, Go, maybe was, going about it the right way. And there was something that mm-hmm. happened when she was a child as well. I don't know if you caught that. Yes, I caught that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that has people. to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. was never dealt with. It wasn't dealt with, definitely. Yes. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. I, I think she just suppressed I, it. And the fact that she couldn't speak about it for so many mm-hmm. years. Yeah. For yeah, so many years, good. like over 30 years, she couldn't speak about it. That's something. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Something. So basically, um, hopefully you're, you're talking about that in therapy as well. And I, I do hope that um, the Lord will hold your hands and, 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 you know, hold you. And, you know, as you walk through this journey of life, I, I pray that the Lord will heal you of every trauma, of every, I mean, after effects of all this Mr. Israelites. Uh, <laughs> the man Israeli, Israeli that is not from journey. Israel. <laughs> he is also running away from Bese. Can you imagine? You see why people like don't God, like hurting people that it took another person's God, business and ran away with, with it. Can you imagine? God, God saved mm-hmm. you, Sister Grace. If you ask me, because I always like to look at. Um, I don't only see bad things in my experiences. Mm-hmm. I, I I have some. Like in my story, the story of my life, I have a bit that is somewhat similar. Not, you know, no daddy issues. I, I thankfully, by the grace of God, I, I am from a home where love is like, you know, is a big deal. Where, you know, so, but that wasn't it. Like I, I moved into the country. I, I am, you know, because um, okay, my story is long, Sister V. So, I, I'm gonna have to come to you yeah, for that. Come on, tell anyway. your story. Uh, come and tell your story. <laughs> this is not the time to tell you. Some of you like to share yeah. your story on top of other <laughs> stories. I have, like but I say. know that something leads to it. You feel like you can relate, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I can relate to a bit of it. Yes. yes. Uh, so, so, but yes. like, you know, you'll be fine, Sister Grace. You'll be okay. Mm. Just um, believe that. I, I, apart from the fact that I have the intellectual knowledge about whatever you're, you've been through and all that, I also do... Um, always see the spiritual side of things so like just as you do therapy back it up with prayers ask god to heal you to just hold your hand and ensure you don't make wrong choices anymore and you know yeah, basically love, for her to love herself love you love, need to love, love yourself her. know that your love is enough mm-hmm. for you if, if yeah. you try your best and other people don't love you no i mean you love yourself and then know that you've got um, God who also loves you and, and, and your mom. And, and your dad may not be now. relating. Your oh, I mean, come on. Yeah, she has a you son. have a beautiful reason. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. To your love yourself. Love you unconditionally. Exactly. Yeah. Not, mm-hmm. Nothing is going to separate that love, you know. Yeah. So let that be your strength. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Let that let that be your strength. Um, Basically, that's that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Emmy. All the acronyms in this world is in your name. My li- <laughs> my number is on the screen. Take it and contact me and come and share. We heal by sharing. We also encourage other people. We are a Sorosuke generation. So, yeah. By all means, contact me. Send me a DM on Instagram. Come out here. Share your story. Encourage other people. I mean, tell us how you de- dealt with all those. I mean, whatever it is. I mean, we're always here. Thank you so much. Another acronym name, BBMJ. Welcome. Hi, BB. Can you hear me? I'm here to Hello, Auntie B. Hello, yes, darling. I, I, can, I can hear you. Can you? 
Hi, yeah. Auntie B, my starlight auntie. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. You're the only one that calls me that. I love it. Welcome. <laughs> yes, so yes, you are a starlight so for so many reasons. Thank um, you. Grace, I want to say good afternoon, good day to you, and good day, Obodo fam. Uh, first and foremost, I think you've done two very beautiful things. Apart from the blessings you have with you, you sought out therapy and you are here to share your story. Um, and I can tell you as somebody speaking right now, I was listening to this show when a light bulb went off my head and I went to look for my own healing journey. And as I speak with you right now, I just came back from my own therapy. Um, I keep telling Auntie B that one day I'll come and share. So today is not for me, it's all you. So well done for doing that because by opening up, somebody else is listening that will feel that they also need some kind of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't join from the beginning, but I have heard most of it to, can, to know that it's been a journey for you. So what I can tell you is look back, learn from the lessons and move on. Mm. stewing over what could have been or what did not happen mm -hmm. is not healthy for you is not healthy for your kids mm -hmm. um and also not not help healthy for life going forward because there is going to be life going forward amen. and you're doing that right now amen you you are already succeeding because you have plans set out hmm. so I congratulate you on that because it's easy for everybody to say things. It's not easy to actually do them until you intentionally step into that space of wanting to do it. And mm. you're, doing, you're doing that already. So mm. well done, well done. I Thank would you. also share with you that I know you have invested in yourself. And like the last caller said, a lot of us grew up in situations where mommy, okay, food, cloth, dress school period mm -hmm. no time to sit down and say hey how was your day what's mm -hmm. bugging you who is bullying you did anybody touch you the wrong way that wasn't preached back then one or two people might have done it but it wasn't wildly known mm -hmm. but now you know and you know from experience and you know from therapy so put that into your own kids they're not too small to speak with I don't call them children. I call them little people because just as you have moods and you have um, times of space and times of quieting down, they also have it, no matter how tiny they are. So learn that and share that with them. Let them know that you are there 24 seven for them, even if it is just for you to talk to them. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't get talking to. Mm -hmm. They are more or less seen without mm -hmm. being felt, mm -hmm. they are more or less seen without being heard. Mm -hmm. So feel your kids, mm -hmm. hear your kids, mm -hmm. grow with them, mm -hmm. teach them. As you teach yourself, you also teach them because mm -hmm. you're teaching a future generation so that the same mistake that you did, they will not, they will not make, make it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a paying forward system. You're mm -hmm. paying it forward to them and you're paying it forward to the people that will come in contact with them. Mm -hmm. So I congratulate you. I applaud you. I celebrate you. It's a healing journey from you onwards and beautiful things will come your way. Things that you did not even expect. I like something that Auntie B said. If you don't end a chapter, you can't start writing a new one. Yeah. So close that chapter mm -hmm. and completely put a full stop to it. Cover the book. Use but, a but, 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 Use mm -hmm. a cello tape and cover Seal the book it. so that you cannot mm -hmm. even flip over any page mm -mm. of it anymore mm -mm. Mm -mm. and start writing not just a chapter but a new book for yourself Absolutely. that would have editions and editions and editions of beautiful things. Because as you're writing your own book, you're writing new books for your children as well, which is their life. Mm -hmm. they, they will learn from you. They will say, we got this from mommy. We got mm -hmm. this chance from mommy. We mm -hmm. watched mommy doing this. And for your dad, I kind of relate mm -hmm. because childhood trauma doesn't surface on, it, you don't even know it exists until something happened. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this, I'm 48 
And it just took me about three months ago to know all my trouble. I don't have any relationship problems, but mm. I have childhood trauma that almost sent me to the great beyond. So mm. I'm glad that you at least identify that. It's one mm -hmm. thing to know. That's where the healing starts from. Mm -hmm. When you get to identify it, then your healing becomes. Because then you know there's something that's not right. Let's fix it. And I'm glad that you're fixing it. May your healing path be ever beautiful. And to be Amen. my starlight. Oh, uh, baby. I could listen so to you all night. You know, you, you, you when you talk, you are like one of these audiobooks. It, it serenades me and can send me to sleep because it's making so much sense. I'm listening, I'm listening. You know, people used to ac accuse me of interrupting, but I can't interrupt you because you are so, you are so, you are so, you are so good. Thank you so much, my darling sis. It is well with you. God bless you. Thank you for encouraging Grace. It's not easy. You know, she could have come out here and doctor that story. She didn't have to tell us about all the times that she was making mistakes and, you know, when she would leave this so-called Mongo Park and go on. She didn't need to tell us all that, that she was getting pregnant for all these other dudes. She could have doctored it. But if you don't own your story and your mistakes, you are not ready to heal yet. It means you are still covering it. You are still trying to cover it. Then you are not ready. You are not even in the path of healing yet. But she owned it. She said, anytime we break up, uh, get into another relationship and get pregnant. So anybody that is coming here and you are judging her, hey, this story doesn't, it's not clear. It doesn't make sense. It's complicated. It won't come. It's your own story, not complicated. You, can you come out and talk? You think it's easy? That's what I'm saying. Please, let's not judge. Life is never so straightforward. Life is complicated. And your complication is different from other people's complication. So please, what we need on this platform and we preach every day is empathy, understanding, being non-judgmental, supporting people. She didn't come here to say, give me this. This She owns her own. She's still working. She's, not, she's taking care of her baby. She said, I need a community. I'm alone. I could have brought her two years ago when she wanted to come. I said, no, you are not ready. Then she was still with the Mongo Park that time. Her, her levels of anxiety were off the roof. I was like, no, mm -mm, not now. But she's so much better. So let's continue to encourage her and help her. Let's help her. Thank you so much, Bibi. You're amazing. I love you. Rema, welcome. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, my dear. Where are you joining us from? Um, I'm joining you from Belgium. Belgium. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just uh, want to say it's quite uh, touching to hear your story, Grace. It takes boldness and courage to share. Hmm. Yeah? And um, as Auntie Bia said, you honed it. You honed it. It is your story. And it is your story to tell. And um, I know you said it's a process in your therapy. Um, like everyone has said um, already, I just want to add and, and say it takes time. Time heals wounds. Man. Yeah? It takes time. So give yourself that time. Take the time you need. Right now, there is no need for you to um, have a relationship right now. Just Take care of you. Focus on you. Love yourself. Take a day out. Go for spa. Hmm? Enjoy yourself. Find someone that would babysit your son and just enjoy the singlehood you are in right now. Rediscover who you are, Grace. Just rediscover Grace. <laughs> this, there is a lot of you that you are yet to discover. Yeah, and it's a great thing that you said. You mentioned that you are in therapy, you're getting help. And um, that takes also boldness to, I know recently I also went for therapy. <laughs> it takes boldness to admit and then to, to take the step and start the therapy itself. <laughs> it takes lots of boldness. So I just want to encourage you with these few words of mine. And I pray that the Lord will heal you. And know one thing, um, God is the Father he gives the fatherly love you seek. Nobody else can give can give you that. 
no man can fill that space. That is what I have come to understand, that no man can fill the space of the fatherhood that I need, that, but only God, and God has showed me that, that he is the only one. And your father is human. Mm. And another thing is that you can't give what you don't have. Absolutely. So your dad may be, um, yeah, maybe had didn't have that experience and couldn't give that to you. Mm. Yeah. But we know our generation, we know now that even if we don't have something, we can learn from it and give it. Yeah. But in those days, we would say, um, yeah, I, I would just put it this way. The day my mom told me, I'm sorry, but then I cried to her about things that she did that she didn't notice I was young. She said, I'm sorry, I did not know. No hmm. one taught me. I wasn't hmm. brought up that way. Hmm. Yeah. So and learning learning is difficult for some of those, you know, those adults. Yeah. It's very difficult for them to learn. Yeah. New things. So just embrace. It's I would just say, like we would say, yeah, chapeau. Well done. Hmm. It takes it takes courage to own your story and to share it even with people you don't know. Despite Absolutely. knowing that comments will come that will hurt you, yeah? but you still showed yourself vulnerable. Mm. And that takes lots of courage. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Rema. Yeah. Really appreciate you. Please call us again from Belgium. I hear Belgium is a beautiful place. I'm here to travel there. So keep calling us and I might just come to Belgium. You know, I'm always looking for places to go visit. Thank you so much for calling. Poppy is next. So... Quickly, three minutes so that we can end the show. Uh, we've done almost two hours. Uh, it took a while to get to the end of the story. It's not always easy to compress, you know, a whole lifetime in, in an hour or an hour and a half. But I think she did very well. Poppy, welcome. Where are you joining us from? I'm um, joining you from that for the UK and TV. Welcome from that for so excited. Pay for that tour. Whenever we pass that, that for tunnel. Welcome. Yeah. I'm not far from that bridge. Um, mm. West, yeah, West Hill. You know, anytime I drive through that place, I'm still scared. I've been in the UK for so long, but I'm still scared. I don't like driving on top of it. It's I don't me. like that bridge as well. It's, it's very so, scary. It's so high. If I look yeah. down, it will seem as if my car is going to fall off. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't like it as well. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, uh, hi, I've I've been messaging you. You've been responding. So I'm one of your foot soldiers and. All I do all day at work is listen to all your past um all your past them um, programs and they're very helpful. And mm -hmm. well done. God bless you and God will bless your ministry. You're doing what you're doing is very rare and it takes a lot of courage. Because even when I listen to some of the stories, I get traumatized. Yeah. So I don't so know how you're dealing with it, but God will continue to strengthen you and fortify you as well. Amen. And bless you with a lot of wisdom because what you're doing is not easy. Um, to Sister Grace, what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be very um, straight to the point with it and a bit hard. Yes, you're sharing your story. You're healing. That's number one healing. The fact that you can talk about it hmm. is healing. I have been a victim and I was intentional from when I knew, I realized that I was in a mess. I was intentional. Hmm. Right from when I fell pregnant. By the time I had my child, immediately I had him. I went back to my GP and I had contraceptives on and I had it for 10 years. Hmm. So I was intentional about everything I did. Probably the difference between you and I will be I had good family support mm -hmm. from back home. Sister B, I, I sent you a message about this about two or three days ago. If you if you go through our your I phone. get so many messages. I know, I know, I know. But well, you responded. Mm -hmm. So is it the same I, name? No. Uh-huh. So oh, yes, on, on WhatsApp, yes, yes, yes. On, on WhatsApp, it is. One it name is. for you on, on, on WhatsApp, one name Abba. No, 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 strange. Sister B. It's it's mm -hmm. Poppy. It's the same name, sorry. It's the sure. same name on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. I was intentional. I had very good family support. They were sending me money from back home. Oh, yeah. You yes. said. Yeah, I remember so, your story. Yes. Yeah. 
So Listen. I was intentional. So every step you take now, you have to be intentional, Sister Grace. Mm. Up until the men that will come into your life, because you're taking care of a ch of a child who is modeling you. And you have to be intentional about your decisions, about your actions. You have to work towards it. When mine happened, I didn't have papers. I didn't have anything. And I left there with nothing. Today, I'm in a very happy place. I have remarried. And I remarried with intention. I'm married to a very good man. Amen. And my son too is happy. Hmm. In fact, my ex wanted me back. He still wants me back. They he went as do. far as going back to my parents. Mm. to ask for my hand in marriage again mm -hmm. make yourself an asset mm. if you make yourself an asset when i didn't have papers i was doing care work the moment oh, my paper came, i remember you're the one that said that even to buy food at home that he would refuse to buy food at home yes yes auntie b i i mm. was eating cerulac in the uk mm. the day I, I told I my dad one, he yeah. was crying when i saw that one man you got to come and share your story poppy is your story... I don't know if I have the courage. Your platform is a very big platform. Hey, <laughs> I don't know if I have that courage sharing. yet. They're hearing you. You don't know. I know. I know. So, <laughs> Sister <laughs> Grace, you have to be very intentional, though. And one thing I would advise you, go out with your kids. You see, me and my son, we grew into each other. Mm. Any, you see, it's asked time now. Back then, when it was in primary school, I would, I would have researched movies that would come out. I was watching cartoon movies like No Man's Business. I knew all the songs. I would ask my son. I was dating my son. Hmm. It wasn't. I didn't have a relationship. I had relationships, but the moment I noticed one or two things, I walked away. I didn't waste time. In fact, my friends that were single together then. When I remarried, they were like, how did you do it? I Me, mean, I'm like, I, I'm, I still put myself out there for dating, but I was intentional. The moment I knew I was with the wrong person, I kept it moving. I didn't stop she, dating. She asked but I kept it first. Moving. I don't think she's even dating now. Dating is yeah. not even in, in... Yeah, at in, some point she will get there, but she still has to be intentional mm. about it. Yes. She, you she needs a lot of healing at the Yes, moment. she needs a lot of healing. Mm. I can see that. Mine was quicker because I grew up in a loved marriage so the moment my own marriage was in problem i knew it, i was in the wrong place hmm. so i was quick to go back to my mom and my mom anything you tell my mom she would tell my dad she doesn't hide anything from my dad that, that's and my a good dad marriage was, that's a good marriage yes in fact i used to fight my mom as a teenager that why is it that you you tell my dad everything one cannot even confide in you as a mom and she goes no we have a contract now hmm. we're raising you together so hmm. I cannot raise you in secrecy. Anything that's, you tell me, I will tell I will tell my husband. That's a love marriage for you oh, to be yes. able to tell oh, your yes. husband everything. Yes, wow. they were married for 46 years before my dad passed. So it was wow. so it was a model marriage for me. Hmm. So the moment I I was in the wrong marriage, I knew straight away. So I went to my mom and straight away she told her husband. And my dad called me. I was like, what is happening? I told him. My dad was mad. But he guided me. He supported me. I, I'm a daddy's girl. So, I, I mean, it, um, Sister Grace, I know you don't, you didn't have that. Mm. But you can be intentional about your child. My child yeah. is 16 now. Anything that happens, it comes to me. I made sure, I made sure that we, ha we still have that rapport till tomorrow. Mm. He recently still told me, Mom, I'm thinking of, um, I think I'm going to have a girlfriend soon. <laughs> yes, so to study, we have that rapport and oh i, I my got God. I, I, all these boys I, and their girlfriend <laughs> as an african mother i wanted to react i wanted to go back to our you, you, you know caution yourself yes then i cautioned myself because he mm -hmm. now as a teenager he's teaching me how to listen i'm not yes. really a very good listener mm -hmm. but because i have him as a teenager and i don't want the streets to teach him i listen to him a lot mm -hmm. now so even when the African in me wants to rise up, w wants to come off. Ah, since we, I can't. Come I can't, I can't when I you start can't, talking to them about Kiriwa, they become very embarrassed. They don't want to hear it. Ah, like, I have my style of talking to him about. <laughs> it. I will pick. I pick his brains first to know. I, I think they prefer men to talk about it to them. They don't like mommies talking to them about ah, it. But I try. Me and him, we have that rapport. We have ah, that rapport. I have that so rapport that, with my boys, so I always try. I always try, but they get so embarrassed with it. Like, I ah, know they. They nah, do. Nah, yeah. Nah, why are you asking? I said, I, even two days ago, I was asking Odua to be. I said, "Are you still? Are you still a virgin?" 
<laughs> and my boy would well I know he's he's still, but he won't old, he was so, if he was white he would have been so red with with embarrassment oh my god I was like mom I said let me know now I want to find out all these girls I want to find out what you're up to <laughs> it's true it's very important mm -hmm. and sister grace even though me i'm a muslim but god is my number one go-to before i even go to my parents i go to mm -hmm. god first amen i fast and i pray you see my mom taught me once my parents taught me one thing when i say my mom i'm talking about and when i say my dad i'm talking about both of them mm -hmm. there is a family joke in our house my mom will say, when you say, ya lao, ya lao is God. Mm -hmm. You do ya ya say. That means once you've prayed to God, you have to gravitate. You have to make the move. Mm. And you have to speak out, ya lao, ya lao. So my mom goes, she has to say, ya lao. Oh yeah, ya ya say, okay, then ya lao. So she will tell you, speak to God, move towards your goal that you are speaking to him with. And you have to speak out as well. You mm. cannot be praying and keep quiet because your helper might just be around the corner. Mm. So you have to, God has to be your number one go-to. Mm. You have to hold on to him. He will lead you. If something mm -hmm. is go going to happen, Sister Grace, you will know. I see things. Mm. I don't dream. I see things. When something is going to happen, I see it. It's like a movie. Some, I will be shown. Yes, thank you for encouraging her. She really needs that encouragement. She also needs befriending. That's what we, she needs. Someone to befriend her, to call her. You know, she doesn't really have friends. So when you're going through this kind of a thing and you are all alone, it, it, the isolation, you could know that even in the Obodo Ibo, the social isolation is a big deal, especially when you are going through something like this. You always yeah. need, you need people around. You need people to support you to call you, someone that you can, you know, even just a cup of tea, going out to, you know, um, a, a coffee shop to have a cup of tea. It helps. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It helps. Thank you. Thank you, Poppy. Thank I appreciate you. you. Thank well you done. so much. Yeah. God bless you. All Thank right. you. Take care. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. We have so, so many amazing callers tonight. I wish I can listen to you guys all night. But I've got so many people waiting, so I'm trying to keep it moving. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bumi, you are next. Welcome. Good afternoon, my Obodo sister, Obodo fam. Welcome, Obodo Happy New sister. Year. Where are you joining us from? From. Hello? Yeah, sure. Annie, you can. Yeah, I will connect you. Are you sure you'll be able to take this on? I don't want to burden you. You're a new mother. Are you sure? Okay, if you are sure now, no problem. I'll connect you, Annie. Thank you. She needs to befriend her. Somebody that can befriend her. Pray with her. She's a Christian. If you can pray with her, you know, talk to her. Bumi, you are not talking, so I'm going to move on because Hello? Of yeah, right. I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, can you I wasn't hear hearing. You dropped off. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe my mic. Right. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome. A big hug and love to Grace and more grace unto you. And uh, I want to say that you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. And for all that you have been through, there is grace, an abundant grace for you. God is Amen. there to help you. Amen. He will see you through. I've passed through this journey before, and that is how they do. But one thing I want to assure you, you're going to have the best of the best. Amen. Just take your time. Take your time, relax. Just like all the other callers have said, like the last sister said, be intentional. Mm -hmm. And learn to love yourself. Just like we preach on this platform, self love. Self love. If you don't love yourself, I don't know. I don't know how you're going to do it. Mm. Learn to love yourself. Like I said in the comment section, that I have learned so much on this platform. And I wish I had known or there had been this platform some 
15, 20 years ago, maybe mm. I wouldn't have found myself in the in the situation I find myself, but I still give thanks to God. Mm -hmm. I still give thanks to God. So the sky is not your limit, Sister Grace. Heaven is your limit, and you are going to shine and shine and shine. But please, this this Mongo Park will definitely come back. All I want you to do is so to don't you want on. him? No, he shouldn't yeah. come back. Is is bad news? Yeah, I know. I know. I'm saying this. It won't when the when the five year uh, visa also expire. Inspire. It doesn't know that yeah. UK UK. They are, they are, you know who they are, who should be. I don't know whether you are in the UK. Our home secretary no. is an Asian woman. Jesus. <laughs> Those ones, eh? they, will, worse, they will try to make that attempt. They will, they no. they yeah. they will they eat everything. Yes, reputation. They will. They. Oh my. Oh, it's, it's just for mm -hmm. her. It's just for her to to be on guard. You know what I mean. Mm. For her to be on guard. You know, physically, spiritually. Otherwise, she should just be on guard. You can never mm. tell. You can. She has to be on guard, and, and I know what I'm saying. And I pray God will help her. I'll get your number, mm -hmm. and I'll call you from time to time. I'm in the U.S. Okay. So no I wish you all the best. Thank you. And God be with you. Amen. Thank you, Sister B. God Thank bless you. you for all you do. And more strength you. and grace unto you, too. Thank you, Sister B. I appreciate you. Mm, God You're bless welcome. you. I, I remember mm. you now. I just, <laughs> just clicked now. Oh, my God. I love you. <laughs> The people nah, in my brain are too many. I mm -hmm. know, I understand. I understand. haven't spoken for a while, so I might be. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. I remember you now. God bless you, ma. Thank yes, you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Bumi. She's had her own story. I just remember her now. Yeah. If you're in the UK, because uh, Grace is in the UK, and you want to befriend her, please, my number is on the screen. Take it down. Reach out to me. We are trying to create a support group around her, people that can encourage, motivate, take her out for coffee, take her out for window shopping, whatever it is that she needs. Reach out to me. That's all we're here for. God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. Hola, you are next. Unmute yourself, please. Hi, thank you. And to be, thank you for all you do. Um, I don't know what accolade I'll give to you, but like we're praising other people the other time. Um, have professor, professor, doctor, psychologist. Your YouTube is, is bouncing back. Can you? can you put your YouTube off? It's bouncing Sorry? back in the background. You have two tabs open. The YouTube is talking in the background. So if you can put your mute it or something. Okay. Yeah. Because as you are talking, it's echoing because there are two tabs ah, open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has it gone off now? I think it's gone off. Yeah, yeah, it's better. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, so I'm I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So what actually do I do I give to you, professor, doctor, psychologist? Um, I don't know. And to be, but I don't have any title. Do. I'm titleless. <laughs> well, titleless. No, the highest title I can receive is and to be anything, anything more than that. Eh, eh, eh. I jump and pass. I don't want me fair. I she gone. Me fair yeah well done well done for all you do and thank you for all you do and we just keep praying that god blesses you you know meet you at the point of your needs yes to grace um lots of love out to you lots of love i grew up with um with a big challenge right i was even thrown away and um the little i could challenge my father about he he just felt oh you were tortured um and life just went on like that and there was still that sign of he not really wanting me and stuff like that and so i grew up with that trauma i lived with different people had challenges anyway here i am um i thank god i'm still trying to heal i'm still trying to because i've been a people's pleaser going all the way to ensure that oh this person is okay at my own detriment and thank god i'm not I've not bite yet. <laughs> now, at times I wonder why I sleep and wake up <laughs> because it's just been a miracle. I laugh even when I'm when I'm crying, when I'm in tears. I mean, when I'm in pain, 
because I know there's a thin line between sanity and insanity. You have come a long way and you're doing well and you even have a son, you know, who you should really be, uh, I mean, be caring for. And of course, while you're healing, he too is healing. Um, I, I just want to encourage you that you've got a family in in us and we've all got our different stories and I, i'm very sure you're going to heal completely and the sky is not the limit you can go higher than the level that you are right now and your the pieces that was broken will be put together gradually and you will climb there at least now you're in you're in, you're in therapy you're you're improving on your life and of course he will try to come back and no way no sure you'll be strong enough to say no you know just keep 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 being stronger reach out don't be quiet don't mm -hmm. die in silence keep speaking out the, to the, the plan is what? for him not even to have access to have to be asking whether yes or no no access yeah. zero access so all, zero. All, all the links he knows you with you have to like nip them nip them cut them nip them in the board kind of thing and i'm and i'm telling you 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 really heal and you will heal completely yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, to me. Let me go. Thank you, my darling. Allah. Thank you. We'll talk, yeah? Ha. Who is calling me on the phone? In this day and age, people still don't know that we don't call on phone for contribution. Egg by me. Okay, let me take it. It's America or Canada. California. California. We are on the comment section. Grace, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Do you watch Mr. Macaroni? Mr. You Macaroni. You know what they call Mr. Macaroni? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He used to say, are you there? Are you there? He says, he says with his Yoruba accent. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to mimic now. Are you there? Grace, are you there? How are you feeling, my darling? Yeah, it's, um, I, I don't know. The I love think you are crying. Really I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> In the background, mm, don't worry. You know, how, you don't even know how blessed you are. You know that baby. Let's even talk about how God, how God blessed you with that beautiful baby. Mm? And it's yeah. not with the Mongo Park. Imagine if it was with the Mongo Park. If it was with the Mongo Park, it would be a tie, something that would tie you together for life. Hey. Mm. I keep asking myself while you are narrating <laughs> your story, babe, how is it that you were with this man for so long and you never got pregnant for him? But anytime your yeah. relationship packs up and you date someone else, you get pregnant. How is God, eh? Yeah. Yes, God. Mm. Yeah. God is good. Natalie, hello. Hi, Auntie B. Hello, baby. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi Grace, um, and to be thank you for everything that you're doing, as I always say. And Grace, thank you for sharing your story. I think, like many women, when you started talking at first, obviously as women were filled with bias, but the more you spoke, the more I was filled with empath with empathy, as well as um, you know, I was also happy that you've come to this realization because it's one thing to have gone through something and continue being a victim. But Grace has crossed over from being a victim and actually realizing like, oh, these are the mistakes I've made. And she's taking positive steps by going through therapy and also talking. Talking is important when you've gone through something, it's important to, to talk, to share. It's also part of healing. And I'm so grateful that Auntie B has provided this platform which also acts as therapy to both the victims and also to other people to learn and also to resonate if they've gone through similar experiences so all i can wish grace is that from here it's only upwards and upwards you're still young there's there are good quality men out there and i think it's time to first of all discover who you are and mm -hmm. until you know who you are Amen. that's when you can find a good partner without discovering who you are 100 percent knowing what you want what you deserve self-love in its totality i don't think you can find a partner who will love you and who will serve you the way you need to be served as a woman you know so take your time to rediscover yourself and to rest you know to just build that self-esteem whether you have a man or not you are enough 
And I pray to God that Grace, you are such can a wonderful you woman. That? I want you to repeat that, Natalie, because you talk very fast. I'm not sure if you know. You talk <laughs> no, really fast. I'm be, I'm repeat that again. There's that something that you said slow. now. I want you to repeat it to Grace again because she's listening. Um, can you remind me what I Whether said? Whether she has a man or not, you said you are oh, enough. Yeah. You oh, are yes. enough. You are Grace, enough. whether you have a man or not, remember you are enough. You are you enough. Don't, you don't I need a need man to, to need, affirm we, we, you. You should put it in a plaque for people to read. You are enough. God mm. made you. You are perfect. You are created by God. You are beautiful. You are gifted. You are endowed. Yes. You are knowledgeable. You are beautiful. You yes. are knowledgeable. You are enough. You are enough. And Grace, you said that you're also using talking therapy because you're using talking therapy. I think if you've got sticker notes, write on sticker notes everything that's positive about you. Write you're positive, you're beautiful. Everything, put it on sticker notes. In the morning, if you've got a mirror, put it there. Once you say your devotions, or if you're a Christian, if you pray, look at those stickers to remind you that, Grace, you're beautiful, you're intelligent. All the negative things that that Mongo Park said to you, and that anyone in your past has ever said to you, any negative things, overwrite them with positive things over your life. That Mongo Park thought you were dull. Say, Grace, you are intelligent. Write it on a small sticky note and remind yourself every morning, Grace. You need to love yourself first and your son. You're so beautiful, Grace. You're so intelligent. And I just wish you the best. And to be, have a lovely night. And please may God continue to bless you with long life, with so much wisdom and grace so that you can continue healing so many people with your platform. And to be, I love you so much. And I hope more and more people get exposed to your platform. May your cup never run empty. Have a lovely Amen. night. Amen. Thank you so much, Natalie. Love you. Appreciate you. God bless you, my darling. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. She says something there, which is what we always reemphasize here. Until you realize that you are enough. You are enough. By the way, Grace, be all is sending you love. He's not able to call in now, so he just wants me to let you know that, you know, he just he sent me a message to let you know that he's not able to call now for some other reasons that I don't want to disclose. But he's saying that, you know, you are a smart, intelligent, gifted, and highly knowledgeable young lady, and he's, he's here and willing to support you in whatever capacity, if you need it, that... You know, he's just sending you love. He's sending you love. Yeah. He's sending you love. So you are enough. You are loved. You are appreciated. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love all the many things. You have the gift of education. You are a beautiful girl. You've got a son who loves you unconditionally. There are so many things. Because, again, if you want to go spiritual, the way the devil always tries to steal our joy is for you to focus on what you don't have. Meanwhile, you have so many things going on well for you in your life, oh. You are enough. So that's what I'm going to stick with tonight, to run with. You are enough. Thank you so much, Grace, for coming to share with us tonight. I really appreciate you. Yeah? Your, 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 your beautiful boy is still talking. <laughs> <laughs> he also said something it's like, Mommy, why are you the one doing all the talking? Me, Unko, I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah, you thank, you so mm. thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for your beautiful words. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Mm. And yeah, and I don't take this for granted as well. So thank you so much. Okay. We'll talk. We'll talk on WhatsApp, okay? We'll finish it up on WhatsApp. Yeah? Yes, yes, ma. Thank All you. All right, then. Take care of yourself, my darling. I love you very much. Yeah, love you too, man. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so that was Grace. A lot of people were, were saying about her because her voice, even me, when she started talking to me, I was like, are you sure you're up to 20 with this voice? She has Annie's voice. Some people have this kind of voice for life. Someone like Annie, 
Even when Annie is 90 years old, she'll still be talking like that. Her voice will never change. So, no, she's not that young. She's actually in her, in her late 30s. So, she's a matured, you know, not matured, matured, but, you know, she's a grown woman. And, yeah. What I love about her is the fact that she realizes that she's made mistakes. She's willing to take steps to correct them. And what we need to learn, all of you that are watching tonight, including those of you that are refusing to like this video, I know you are learning, that's why you are here. What you should learn is that when you don't love your children and show them what love is like, they are going to grow up being starved of love emotions they'll be looking for it in the wrong place coupled with the fact that we as africans always try to undermine the impact of childhood trauma grace said something at the beginning of the show that when she was seven years old in nigeria two different agbalagba those kind of people when they start seeing Things in their life going wrong. People will be running up and down. Even the, their wives now and the people in their life will don't know. They will not know that it's what they did in the past that is coming to hunt them now. Because come and see has their address. So there's a lot that's happened to her in her life. So, but we thank God. And I won't delete that you end though. But as long as you are here, you have the opportunity to change your story. You have the opportunity to set the record straight. Okay, okay, oh, this may have been my life for 40 years. No, but now, today, I'm changing it. I'm making a difference. I want to turn this around. I think Grace is getting there now. She acknowledges all the mistakes she made. But she was, if you ask me, from the minute she met this Yoruba, so-called, soft-spoken, church-going Mongo Park, she was targeted. All he wanted was to come to the abroad from Israel. And that's why he was so desperate. Uh, let's get married. Come and do your internship here. Oh, I will marry with, with you with another man's pregnancy. The average Nigerian man and me, I know. Hmm. The fact that even know that, that they even know that you've been with another man, lie, lie. They will not even want you again. Most people. But this one say, don't worry. Bring the pregnancy. I will take it. Not one, but two. So that's to tell you that there was an agenda, but she didn't see it. And because of pressure, family, your marriage, she was running up and down. She did all the work in this marriage. And I think that's why she was so broken because she was the one that did all the work. She was the one that went to Israel to do houseman, to stay with him. She was the one that went to Nigeria to meet the family. She was the one that filed for him. She was the one that went back to Israel to go and marry him. She was the one that brought him here. She was the one that went to meet lawyer. She was the one that was doing everything. So let's be careful. Let's be careful. If you don't love your children, they will look for love in all the wrong places. They will think any man that say, I love you, anything the man say, they will not question it. Especially for daughters. If you have a daughter, I'm talking to parents now. Please, show your daughters what it means, what love means. And it starts by self love tell them every day hello make them feel very secure in their appearances in the way they look in their intelligence help them to love themselves even when they feel sometimes that they don't they they, are, they, they don't like themselves no as a father as a mother tell your children they are amazing people when they grow up secured you know grounded in their love for themselves and confident then they will be able to identify any BS disguising as a Yoruba demon or somebody coming to. So many things, lessons in this story. She, you can see she was desperate for that love. She was looking for it in all the wrong places. But you know what? I believe strongly that God does not make any mistake. Anything that happens in our life is for a purpose. And I believe that God is about to turn her story. He will use the mess in her story to become her message. In a few years, she will be the one that will be counseling young ladies saying, I was you so, so, and so number of years ago. But look at me now. There's nothing God cannot do. 
I'm just going to close by saying that, Grace, I've already told you this. Go and love yourself. Forget about what he's telling people about you. He's telling people that uh, you gave him another man's child, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's when you are still trying to judge in the court of public opinion, pay, uh, who is telling the truth. It's me. It's him. Mm -mm. Don't even respond. It's not necessary. Ignore all that. Ariwoja ni. It's all Ariwoja. It's not necessary. Don't try to prove anything. Don't try to, you know, explain yourself. You don't own nobody, no explanation. Okay? You are on a journey of self-discovery. You are in a journey of healing. You are in a journey of reinventing yourself. And you have responsibility now because you have a child. So forget about all that. But don't worry. This is not the end of your life. Uh, we've seen it happen now. You know how many testimonies we have? The testimonies that load in there, I cannot even wait to unleash all that testimony on you guys. You guys don't know what is happening in the background. There's a lot happening in the background and it's all good news. People who have been on this show two, three years ago, two years ago, and how God had turned things around. So you are not going to be different by the grace of God. So if you are in the UK, particularly because of the time difference, uh, so it's easier when you are in the same country and you want to befriend Grace. You want to hug her. You want to be her friend. You want to call her. You want to please reach out to me. That's my number on the screen. Mm. She needs that, you know, support emotionally. She needs friends, genuine friends, not judgmental friends. You don't need to be her age mate. You can be older. It doesn't matter. You can be younger. It doesn't matter. This is what we do here. So let's come together and support her. And I know she's going to be all right. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys very much. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for all the people that called into the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chinye, you can't wait to hear this, the testimony. The one that I have, if I tell you, it will blow your mind. Eh, you know that song? You blow my mind. You blow. <laughs> it will blow your mind. Ha! What God cannot do does not exist. Chai. This one, I'm keeping it under wrap. I'm going to unleash it soon. I'm going to reveal it soon. But let's let it be finished first. Then we'll come and tell the world that. See what the Lord has done. That's what we're going to do. God is good. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. Love you guys. And I will see you very soon. I saw a story today that was so intriguing. I don't know whether we should talk about it. Bio, what do you think? Somebody was paying tights. <laughs> Tato, thank you so much for that super chat. Oh, you're amazing, Tato. $50. $50. Great work, Auntie B. God bless your, you, Grace. God bless your son. You will, he will give you unconditional love forever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Tato. You are so amazing. Beautiful girl. Thank you. I don't know how many people saw that story today where one man came on social media and said he's been paying tight to do not miss. He brought out a tight book. <laughs> I'm a wrinkle. Social media. He said he's been paying tight all these years that he doesn't want to go to heaven. That that the Donamis pastor told him that uh, his investment in heaven. He said he doesn't want to go to heaven because he's currently in hell in Nigeria. <laughs> Bio, this video, eh? He shockatalized me. Me no even know what he to say. He said he doesn't want to go to heaven anymore. Now he wants the money back. He said he said the church should give him back his money. I think we should talk about it. What do you guys think? <laughs> He said, he said, he brought out the tithe book. He brought out all the certificates he got in the church. He said, mm -mm, I don't believe in heaven. He said, I, I said, the moment I'm in hell in Nigeria, I need my money back. Money are held by me. <laughs> Nigerians. The man was serious, so he was not joking. Honestly, he was not joking. I think we should talk about it. Hmm. I will do a show about it. So look out whether tomorrow... I don't think I'll be able to do Sunday. So it's likely to be tomorrow. So look out for it. I'll set it up for tomorrow. I'll WhatsApp you the video, Bio. You will laugh and you will vent. The man say he wants, he say I want, he say he's invested in the kingdom. He wants all the money back. He had a tight booklet. Apparently they give them a tight booklet. It's not smart, you know. Hey, let's talk about it. I know tightening is a very controversial thing. 
But I want to talk about it. Can you ask for your tight back? <laughs> Nigerians. Nigerians, eh? Oh, my God. Oh, amazing people. Okay, yeah, let's talk about it tomorrow. It's likely to be earlier than 7 p.m. So look out for it. I'm going to set it up. Cherish Olivia, you saw it, ba? Okay, let's discuss that tomorrow. Not 7 p.m., but earlier. Okay, thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. He, he shows certificates as evidence of his registration. He said, I did this training. I did this. I did this. But now, we're in hell in Nigeria. I want my money back. <laughs> Oh my God, I cannot laugh. Nigerians are, oh my God, cruise people, I swear. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. If you want to be friend, Grace, please let me know. Okay? I appreciate you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, early evening, not this time, but earlier, much earlier. Thank you. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm.